All right. So let's let's just wait before we start it's, it's we start streaming. Okay. So I think it's okay now. Please double check. Oh, nag private message. Nag private message pa sa akin si Adrian. Nag private message. Oh, napaka sweet talaga ni Adrian. Nag private message pa siya sa akin. He loves the microphone. Thank you for loving the microphone. The microphone loves you too. All right. So hi. Um all right. So medical technologies play prayer. Can somebody lead for us? Who wants to volunteer? Somebody said something I didn't see. Francis Alipio. All right. So let me share the screen for you. And in, just in case you don't know, or just in case you haven't memorized it, because I'm not that mean. <laughs> memorize mo? Memorize mo? O oh, sige, hindi na natin iaano. Hindi ko na ipipreset. <laughs> All right. Na hurt ka dahil akala mo hindi ko ipipreset. Ikaw naman, hindi naman ako. I'm not a monster. <laughs> All right. Pinamemorize sa sa kanya. Oh, okay, sige, sige, sige. Why not? Why not? Malay mo. Malay mo tamaan ng kulog si Sir si Sir Marco magbigay sa iyo ng ano magbigay sa iyo ng plus yan. O sige. So I will we will we will present you we will post you with the challenge. All right. Memorize you memorized version of the medical technologist prayer. Go Francis. Hal. Sige lang, okay lang. All right. All right. Thank you so much for leading the prayer for us. This is something of great importance for many medical technologists, both presently and, of course, in the past. And hopefully you guys also, as you enter the practice of medical technology, congratulations. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, we're going to continue on with our discussion. By the way, the reason why I asked you guys to uh, I ask you. I ask you guys to prepare for the medical technologist prayer. Is also it is the re the reason why the reason being is that it is going to be asked in your board exam, okay? In the form of usually it's going to be either the first part or the second part, uh, the first part or the second, uh, the last part of the um, of the exam. All right. Uh, uh, the, the, the prayer rather um, usually along the lines of the um, I remember when I was taking the board exam 
they were the one of the blank questions uh, one of the things that they asked us in the board exam if i'm not mistaken was the eternal physician was left blank and one of the choices will be there and one of the choices left there was sorry somebody left me um, sent me a message hang on a sec okay so one of the choices they left us there was the immortal physician the eternal physician and the uh, what was that? What was the other one? Eter immortal physician, internal physician, uh, the great physician, and the philosophical physician. So we had to choose which one. Uh, so uh, fortunately for me, the night before the examination, I prayed to my heart's content, um, and it was one of the questions. And one of the things that I remembered is that said something about eternal physician and then i shaded i shaded the eternal physician one so that's a, that's a, that's actually a true a true story uh from my own experience so be mindful of this these things uh they would ask you the first paragraph or the last paragraph of the prayer okay um i, I can also remember uh, one of my students they said they said but the blank one was the divine light Grant us by thy blank and deep insight and responsibilities of our tasks. So hopefully you guys will remember this on your exam day, uh, exam day here at your school as well as in your um, board exams. All right. So now let's move on to the main topic of our discussion for today. Republic Act 5527. Now, bulk of, the, bulk of our questions in medical technology laws and bioethics, if we, if, if we're not, if we're, if you're going to be, if you're going to be wondering, is the RA 5527. It is also known as the Philippine Medical Technology Act of 1966. And I'm sorry, I have to, I have to close my Facebook. <clears throat> Somebody keeps messaging me and pestering me. I'm terribly sorry. All right. Can you guys can you guys hear somebody ke somebody uh, keeps on texting me? Oh, doot, something like that. <laughs> can you guys hear it also? Hello. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Tahimik nila. Medyo kina medyo. Wala, wala ka nila rinig at tut! Gwaganan, yung Facebook notis notification. Somebody keeps... Meron ka nila rinig? Okay. Ah, okay. Kanina. Alright. So, yun. Kinlose ko na siya para hindi na kayo... Hindi na ma-ano ma ma ang discussion natin. So, RA5527, please remember this at the very... Uh, this is one of the must know ideas uh, must know things that you need to memorize if you're going to memorize something for related to medical technology laws this is some this is probably one of the most important things we have a lot of things to memorize in medical technology laws this is one of them all right if you don't remember if you don't know what this is the numbers all right do not come into your exam room do not come do not sit down and take your exam all right I, I, I implore you, do not come to the exam without memorizing these numbers because 95% of the time, this question will be asked in any exam related to our profession. All right? So, an act, uh, it is an act requiring the registration of medical technologists, defining their practice, and for the purposes, for, and for other purposes. Okay? So, Philippine Medical Technology Act of 1969. All right. It is. It was. It was promulgated during the time of our dear, our our dear President Fidel, uh, Fid, not Fidel B. Ramos, um, Ferdinand Marcos. Sorry. Okay. And that's uh, that's one of the things that you need to remember because uh, not only in, at the per, at the current uh, at the current state of our elections, but also. There will be some things that you you want, you might be asked in the exam. Who is the president? You, who who is the president who who signed the the bill for it to become a republic act? All right. Okay. So before we continue, I need to ask people on the people on the chat if you do, if you don't mind. 
um, what is the difference? What is a Republic Act? How is a law passed, by the way? This is Philippine Constitution, of course. You've already taken it, I think, in your second years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Adrian, is that correct? Um, in your second years? When you are, when you were, yeah. So, um, you took Philippine Constitution, the reason, and one of the prerequisites to get to advance to this subject is to pass that one as well as introduction to medical technology. Now, um, the reason being is that you need to know what are the different types of laws. Um, one of the examples that I will give you or today is Republic Act. How is a, how is a law passed from, from writing? Ano siya? Para ba siyang thesis? Can anybody answer me? Para ba siyang thesis? Kailangan pagsulat-sulatan and then i-defend? Or there's a different way to make a law? Can anybody briefly des discuss to me how a law is, is about to be passed before we continue on our discussion of, of RA5527? Anybody? Holistic ang, holistic ang approach ko pala, guys. Ha? We, I usually try to Um, writing, Congress, slash Senate, then President. Oh my God, somebody answered correctly. Wow, that is, that is roughly the, um, yeah, that is roughly the, the process in which a particular, uh, in which a particular law is going to be passed. All right, so briefly, I will discuss to you how a law is passed. According to Francis, it's actually written. So, um, it's either the Congress or the Senate who will start the writing process. Now, whether the, uh, whether the Senate or the Congress starts it, it depends on who is the person who wrote it. All right. So it starts out as a Senate bill. All right. Or a, uh, a it starts out as a bill te technically. Now, in this case, our uh, the the medical technology bill, the RA five five two seven was passed in, in initially as a Senate bill. And then it, it, go, it went to the process of first reading. Are there any modifications? If no modifications are asked, it will be, it will be sent in the, um, it will be sent in to the speaker for another reading, a second reading. They will read it again for, a th for the second time. No amendments. The, if there's no amendments, then the bill will be, then the bill will be, held again for a, not, for a third one. After the third one, it will be sent to Congress. After, after the House of Representatives reads it for three times, after three times again, it will be then sent to the President either for, either for it to be vetoed or to be sent back to the, to the upper and the lower chamber of, of our government, legislative portion of our government. Before again being sent, but if if it, if it's if it's vetoed, it will it will stop there. It means that the bill has not been passed. It means that there is something wrong with it. The executive order is the one that actually produces is actually the one who will uh, who will sign it. Legislative is only this responsible for writing and hearing all of the proponents of a bill of a bill before it becomes a republic act. All right, clear. Everybody, everybody's clear with that one? It might be asked in your exam. Who knows, right? Okay. So clear? Clear bang lahat? All right. Adrian, thank you so much for, make, make it, for, for answering. All right. Okay. So, uh, so writing three times, three times. Um, Senate and Congress, uh, Senate and Congress, Senate and Congress, specifically House of Representatives. There will be a committee, by the way. I forgot to mention there will be a committee. If the president signs it or if the president vetoes it, it means that it will go back for, for amendments. And if it's not, uh, if it's okay, uh, the veto requirement has been passed. The president will receive it again. Oh, okay, fine, I'll sign it. That's the reason it's important for you guys not just as medical technologists, but also as citizens of the Philippines to know how your bills are passed, to know which, uh, which um, politicians you are going to root for. You need to root for 
Um, uh, I'm sorry if I sound a little bit biased here, but I do not like it when um, showbiz personalities are the ones who are getting the highest position, uh, high, getting the highest votes in our land. Because remember, medical technology is a science-based as well as a professional ba profession-based um, practice. And if somebody who is just, I don't know, somebody who who got famous from from showbiz and just wanted to enter the world of politics, he doesn't know anything about the practice. I know it might sound well, but again, it's just for you guys to be informed about these things. All right, and I took the time for you guys to know what how a law is passed. So be mindful, okay? So be mindful next time, especially right now that the that the um, that the election is coming up. And how many here is registered to vote? And then again, I want I want to see how many people are registered to vote. Raise their hands. So a lot of people raise their hands. So you guys have the capacity, all right? So you guys have the capacity to change the outcome of our uh, of our profession, all right? So it's not just the president, mind you. It's not just the president. Whoever the president is, he also must be mindful of our of our practice but also the members of the set the congress the house of representatives as well as the senate all right so i'm not manipulating you i am I, i'm not registered to vote i actually do not practice my suffrage my my my, my um i do not practice my right to vote actually i uh, uh even when i was in the philippines i i didn't want to vote not because i don't want our country to change but I want to stay neutral, <laughs> especially now when I'm seeing a lot of people fighting over who, who's going to be our, who's going to be the leaders of our land. So you guys have the, you guys have the opportunity to choose people who are, who are going to be the leaders of our, um, our country. And so if it, I'm sorry again for those people who support um, celebrities, but I would rather we have we have a government that is led by professionals, okay? All right, and so, uh, and, it, and I always urge my parents uh, when they go to the voting, po voting polls to please mom and dad, vote for a doctor, vote for a lawyer, all right? Vote for a lawyer or vote for a journalist because these are the people who actually, uh, who have actually practiced their profession, all right? They have insights that, that can make laws and they can debate about laws, uh, how laws are made. All right, these processes takes a democratic process. Uh, these things take a democratic process, and in a democratic process, it has to pass through a lot of hands before a law is going to be passed. Because, because um, our country is, uh, as I mentioned before, it's democratic, and therefore, therefore, it's ruled by the people. If it just passed to the president, then that's not a, then that's not. A, then that is not a that's not democratic. That is a dictatorship. All right, okay. So, okay. So uh, this coming May, I want you guys to be mindful of the people who you vote because you have the chance to to change the future of our country. All right, all right. So um, uh, I ranted so much about that one. Um, it's not a rant actually. It's for you guys to be informed also because we have a lot of time to talk about this actually we have a debate activity rate later i designed it for you guys to understand further about uh, to have a, to apply your understanding of uh, basic law principles as well as your ability to understand your profession in a deeper level in a in a in a not so not so scientific level all right okay um ra61 is also another thing that you guys need to remember. 6138 is the act of, an act to amend certain sections of the Republic Act 5,527, 5, 20, known also as the Philippine Medical Technology Act. So it is an amendment. All right. So as I mentioned before, it needs to come. It needs to be passed. It needs to pass to several hands: Congress slash Senate. Um, both of them will need to see the, the transcript of whatever it is. There will be a committee, there will be a hearing. And if it, if it does not, uh, if, the, uh, if it does not, um, if it does not get approved, there will be amendments. 
So RA6138 is an amendment, okay? A, for, uh, a form of an amendment. Um, we're not going to talk into details about the certain sections of this one because I want you guys to focus more on RA5527 because it's mostly the, the, ones, the one that is mostly asked in the board exam. So don't worry about it. Um, but, there are, but there are several sections that are amended by the RA6138. Okay, and I summarized it for you guys in this slide. It was promulgated in the year, in the year, uh, <coughs> in the year, uh, 1970, um, August, uh, August 31st. Uh, the sections that were amended were 16, 12, and 22. All right, we're going to know what what were the, how many sections do we have? By the way for RA5527, if I'm not mistaken. This is also one of the recall questions for a previous uh, board exam, for the previous board examinations. Does anybody know how many sections we have? Again, do not sit into the exam if you have no idea what is RA5527 and how many sections there is, all right? This is my advice to you guys. Do not sit into the exams without knowing how many sections there is under the RA5527. Can you guys chat in the type uh, 32? Yes, Jessica. Yes, you are correct, Jessica Tantonko. You are correct. That is the amount or the number of sections that we have here. Um, and Jessica, I, since you're the one who answered, I have questions for you. Can you please un unmute yourself, Jessica? All right. Hi, Jessica. Open cam naman. Open cam naman dyan, Jessica. We want to see. <laughs> face reveal. Hashtag face reveal. All right. Bakit pala hindi sila, bakit pala hindi sila naka-open cam? Parang last time naka-open cam. Ay, hindi pala doon. Pala sa kabilang section yun. So, ano pala? All right, Jessica, I have a question for you. What is the what is the name for section one and section thirty two? Uh huh. Wonderful. Okay, so you can sit in the board exam. All right. Uh, the part, uh, how many parts are there in the board exam? Wait, let me, I've taken so many tests, I forgot. I forgot, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Let me go back to this. Clinical chemistry, microbiology, hematology, cl clinical microscopy. Ah, it's part five. So you can sit into part five of the board exam, all right? Other ones, mm, that will be that will depend on your professors, all right. But for me, I think you have you are well versed enough in in medical technology laws and bioethics for you to continue. But for the other ones, I'm not sure. It will be it will depend upon your professors whether or not you're ready or for the for the subject. Okay, so six one three eight. We are from six one three eight amendments for sections, <coughs> amendments for sections. 16, 21, and 22. We're going to discuss them later when we begin. I'm going to help you guys later on. All right? Now, sections that were amended by PD, PD-498. What is PD-4? What, what do we mean by PD? This is another important, re, uh, this is another important uh, question for you guys to remember. PD. Sino yung nagsagot? Ay, eh bakit ikaw nagsalita? <laughs> Rainiel, I missed you so much. Oh my gosh. Rainiel, yung kakulitan mo, Rainiel, ha? Bakit ikaw nag binasa mo lang? Alright. Alright, very good. So, a, a presidential decree is the meaning of PD, if you transcribe it. Now, what, one of the reasons why I think this is important for you guys to remember, as well as my earlier question to you guys, um, as well as my earlier statement before, is that um, presidential decree is, is something that, uh, that is, uh, is, is a form of a law similar to, similar to the RA. However, this is the one that passes, that bypasses several, uh, several 
uh, features of lawmaking. It doesn't pass to the Senate. It doesn't pass to the Congress. It's actually just signed directly by the, by the President. Wha wha what is the reason by that one? Um, anybody here who is well-versed in history, uh, the history of the Philippines? Anybody? All right, Francis, why, how, why does it bypass this? The, why does it bypass the several stages of lawmaking, Francis? Unmute yourself. Mm, okay. An educated guess, ha? Baka ba maya? Mm. Kasi nga. Kasi... Mm -hmm. All right. That's okay. That's good. That's good. It's of utmost need. Therefore, the president actually created it directly from the, the executive office. Correct. But the reason why I ask this question is look at the, uh, if you guys remember, I asked a question about the date. All right. When was this? When was the, when was the presidential decree 498 created? I'll give, you an, I'll give you a clue. His son is running for president right now. Right, Marcos. What happened in the Marcos regime? History class. All right. Francis raised his hand. No. No, 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 no. All right. Anybody else can have an educated guess? Why a presidential decree? Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Martial law. It means it gives all powers to the executive branch. Correct. That is correct. Thank you so much. Martial law happened, and therefore the president can, can pass laws to by, that can bypass the, that can bypass the Senate and the, uh, the Senate and the. Uh, House of Representatives. Thank you so much. So that's why that's why it's important for me for you guys to remember the dates as well, okay? Because there are certain uh, there are certain laws that are being passed in our land that that, that bypasses certain things. All right. So a presidential decree is one of those things. All right. So why is it important? Why why is PD PD forty nine four nine eight important? Because it amended a lot of sections. It did first of all it it reiterated the definition of a medical technologist, including also the actions of the, the scope of the practice, the council and the committees, uh, uh, the council and the bureau, or uh, the, the other, other things that we're going to talk about later on. All right? So it amended a lot of things, actually the whole thing, almost the whole thing. All right? So and after that one, after July, after June 20, 28, 1974, there was another one, PD one three five one five one five three four. It was again promul promulgated at the time of President Marcos because it was it, it, former President Marcos because um, because of certain things. Amendments in the section is three, eight, and thirteen. We'll discuss later on what these are i just want you guys to remember this one i know these are me these things are memory work uh, memory work uh, ideas I, I i implore you to m memorize them because these are things that are important in your exams all right these are these are things that are important i would not uh, i would not add this it had uh, if it does not have any significant uh, sig significant things okay so again it uh, it reiterated the importance or the differences between the practice, uh, the, the scope of medical technology, as well as certain things uh, like Section Eight and Thirteen, which we're going to talk about now. There are thirty-two sections of RA five five two seven, and we're going to go at we're going to go at them one by one. Namali ang aking ano? Namali ang aking secretary. Pa ulit ulit niyang ginawa ang definition of terms. So we will go to uh, no, we will go one by one section one. All right. Uh, sorry. Uh, we're going to go one by one. I will open up my lecture notes 
for you guys. I will share it in the screen so you guys do not get confused. Ang aking sekretarya ay hindi hindi nagbabasa ng kanyang ano, ng kanyang highlights. <laughs> Kinapi and paste lang niya. All right. So wait, hang on a sec. Uh Where is my mask now? All right. Let me cancel my share screen for this one for a while. Hang on, class. Nakita ko kagad dalawang definition on, of terms at saka ang ano eh, ang um, compensation. Let me stop the presentation for a while, okay? Let me, um, I need somebody to tell me if they see the uh, Word file that I just opened. Bayan. Can you guys see the Word file? All right, so we're going to go here. Hang on a sec. All right. All right, can you guys see it? All right. Can you guys see it? All right. Okay, good. So we're going to start one by one. If you're going to memorize something for empty laws, this is probably the most important thing that you're going to memorize. Section 1, title. Section 2, definition of terms. Um, just going to read it one by one for you guys, and then I'll ask again later afterwards, okay? Council of Medical Technology, compensation of the Council of the Medical Technology, the functions of the medical technology, minimum course requirements to uh, to to become registered. Um, the Board of Medical Technology is also there. Qualifications to become an examiner, executive officer of the board, the compensation for the Board of Medical Technology, the functions of the medical technology, removal of board members, which is the reason why there is amend amendments, um, accreditation, inhibition of the practice of ethical technology, examination or the board examination, qualifications for the examination, the scope of the examination, report of rating, rating of the examination, oath taking, issuance of the certificate or of certificate of registration, the COR, the one that is displayed in the one that is displayed in the in the workplace which is uh, in accordance to our law, the fees that you're going to pay for the examination, the refusal to issue a COR, what are the conditions, administrative investigation for people who violate the laws of the, the RA5527, all right? And what else is there? Uh, administrative investigation, appeals, for you if you if you went into, if you violated some of the, some of the sections, all right? And the three R's, or the reinstatement, reissue, and replacement of the COR. Foreign reciprocities, whether this includes the practice of medical technology from one country to another, whether, uh, if it's the Philippines. Um, just, as, just for you guys, uh, just for your guys' um, um, information, in our country, you are not allowed to practice medical technology or the uh, medical clinical laboratory science in our country if our if our citizens are not allowed to practice in in another country all right so for example in japan we cannot practice there because they cannot practice here hence the term reciprocity all right now we also have the roster of medical technologists which is available now online all right prc.gov.ph if you're not uh, if you want to be specific um Penal provisions, the amount, hindi, hindi penal ha, penal. Baka mamaya ma, may makarinig dyan, pinagtatawanan ako. Penal, alright? Penal provisions. What are, the pay, what are the punishments a person will receive if he violated any of the sections or the, the law related to medical technologists? The separability clause, the repealing clause. These are things that are, these are things that whether or not we can change it. It's important for a law to have a repealing and a separability clause because if we don't have this clause, it means that this law is absolute. And and in the world in the world of in the world of lawmaking or legislation, 
uh, any law cannot be passed without a separability clause or a repealing clause. They would always look at it. That's why we need lawmakers who actually understand. Again, I'm reiterating because you guys are going to be voting, uh, will be in the voting polls on May. And therefore, if you are going to vote for someone with, who, has, who has little knowledge or illiterate about laws, then that means that person is undeserving for a high position in the country. All right? You are the future. Remember, you are the future of our nation. That's why I am, in, I am, I am exercising my, my capabilities to mold you guys for a better future. Oh, diba? Ang bait-bait ko. Diba? Alright. And the last one, of course, is RA, uh, of RA5527 is the effectivity clause. Always, there, there will always be an effectivity clause. The last three ones is always the important ones. It cannot be. It cannot be. It cannot be. Say, it cannot be. Uh, if a, if a law is made, it cannot. It is separate from other laws. If if, if uh, section thirty one also to talks about what the ability of a law to be mo to be flexible and malleable. It can be amended. All right. And lastly, thirty two is your effectivity date. All right. When is the effectivity date of five five two seven? If I'm, if I may be so bold to ask you guys. When is the date of uh, of five five two seven? Mayra Gagaso. Mayra, are you still there? Just wanna ask. When is the effectivity effectivity date of RA five five two seven? The Medical Technology Act of 1957, 1969. Very good. During the time of which president? Very good. But sinong Marcos muna? Wait lang. Pamamaya. Pamamaya. Sinong Marcos? Baka mabaya yung nag apply for president ngayon. Hoy. Sino? Junior or senior? Very good. All right. Okay. Baka, just to be clear. All right. <laughs> okay, guys, wala akong, ano, ha? wala akong political affiliation. I don't want to, I, again, I don't want to influence your votes. All right. Okay. So, all right. So, wala akong agenda. Gusto ko lang kayong ma-inform ma uh, before you guys can go to the voting polls. All right. So let's go to the Senate bill. So what is a Senate bill? Pinag-usapan ko pinag-usapan natin kanina kung paano maging RA ang isang law. Paano ang ano naman ang bill? All right? So who can answer what is a Senate bill? Anybody in the class? Anybody? Raise your hand, unmute yourself. I don't care as long as you answer. Proposed law all right. Adrian said proposed law. What about other people? Do you, can you guys question? Uh, are you guys okay with Adrian's answer? Do you guys agree with him? Law passed after signed by a se by the Senate President. All right. Um. Ano po? Mm, okay. Medyo ano to. Um, law that is debated and voted on. Ana Jamema Athing. Alright. So actually, Adrian's answer is the vaguest answer, but yet it is the closest. Uh, the closest one among your answers. So a law is going to start either from the Senate or from the Congress or the House of Representatives. Alright? So yun yung nakikita ninyo lagi sa balita. Nakikita niyo doon, please rise for our Senate President Keme Kemerut Kemerut Kemerut. ba? Ganon. Makikita niyo yan. Tapos meron siya makikita, may hawak siyang gavel. Magaganyan-ganyan siya. So magaganyan-ganyan siya, guys. Alright? Order, order in the court. Gaganyan. Sino ba ngayon? Sino ba ano natin ngayon? Si Pimentel ba? I'm not sure who's the current, pre uh, current Senate President. But uh, a Senate bill it has been met. Uh, has be, uh, is, a, is a bill. Uh, hence the term bill. It's not yet a law. It is a proposed law. Alright? So,
So therefore, it ha it's not it has not uh, has no effectivity or anything. All right, it's just there and it's filed. It's been debated on according to Anna Jemima. According to Anna Jemima, it has been debated on, but yet it is filed yet because it hasn't been. It's not as important as the other laws of the land, I suppose. Okay, it's not as important um, yet. So therefore, they will put it on a different, uh, in, on a different meeting, because there ha there's a calendar date for all the laws that are going to be talked about in a particular year or so. That's the reason why we also want. That's the reason why we want uh, we as voters or you guys as voters, because di pa ako pwede, di ako eh. uh, You as voters need to know what is the agenda of your of your politicians. Baka mamaya kasi, ma ma mauusog siya ng mauusog. Um, take for example, Senate Bill. Senate Bill, uh, ano nga number nito? Nakalimutan ko. See? I, um, Senate Bill 2722. Alright? Senate Bill 2722 was authored by Edgardo Angara. The title of the bill actually, uh, that the bill that w w when it was promoted, uh, when it was proposed, was in 2011, anong taon na ngayon? Hanggang ngayon, pinag-uusapan pa din. Nakalagay pa rin siya sa Senado. Nakafile pa rin siya. Hindi pa siya dumadaan sa Kongreso, guys. It has not yet been passed to the Congress for their first, second, or third hearing. So imagine, imagine, maybe, baka ka, at that time, I'm still, I'm still an intern. I was still an intern when Edgardo Angara authored that one. Look at the look at the name of the uh, act, an act regulating and modernizing the practice of medical technology, open and close parenthesis, medical laboratory science in the Philippines, repealing for its purpose, repealing for this purpose numbers five five two seven six one three two presidential decree four nine four nine eight one five three four and for other purposes. What is in what is implicated in this particular in this uh, what is the contents of this particular law? Um, it separates medical technology boards from sep from the phlebotomy board exam because in our country we do not have a phlebotomist as a, a phlebotomist is not a profession in our country. We only have two things to talk about in our country. We only have medical laboratory scientist or medical technologist okay if you graduated what is the um, i'm sorry i have to ask uh sir marco what what is the if sir marco is there um please uh please confirm to me what is the degree that is usually offered in our country na nowadays now because when i graduated my degree was bachelor of science in medical technology what about in um cmcc what is the degree that you guys will get after you graduate after they graduate sir okay okay so that's the reason why this is important all right because guys it define it it um it sort of like uh it's sort of like com uh, um it's making it's making the practice uh, relevant to our current situation okay to our current to the current practice of our profession all right so before uh, before schools are offering medical technology um, which is a little bit vague when you search for it for other in other countries when you search for it in other countries um, lab tech lab specialist all right other in the UK in the UK, say, like for example, here in the Middle East, it's lab tech, lab scientist, or medical laboratory technician, medical laboratory scientist. In another, in other countries, like in Europe, it is a, it is, uh, it's only, it's biomedical scientist. All right. In, if I'm not mistaken, in Germany, it's laboratory technician, which is, in Germany they call it laboratech technician or labor technician which is basically a laboratory uh, if you literally translated it it's going to be laboratory techno technician or technologist technician all right um in the united states it's clinical laboratory scientists mls uh, mls um 
MTs, which are all recognized professions. The reason why this is an important law for us is because it allows uh, it allows the whole population of the Philippines to know that both the, the term medical technologist and medical laboratory scientist are the same thing. Hence, it is modernizing our practice. And also, in the, the act of that, the, the, the reason why this is also important is because some people might be hired as a medical laboratory scientist and they're, 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 they might say, ay, bagong graduate lang yan ng isang, isang profession na hindi ko kilala. Bababa ang sweldo na ibibigay ko. Yun yung magiging epekto niya. Nagets nyo kung bakit important tong law na to para sa atin. And also, one of the reasons why it is important is because it separates the practice of medical technology from phlebotomy, which is also part of our job in the hospital. Right? Right now, when you go, when you graduate or when you do when you uh, if you um, I'm sorry I'm sorry if this might sound a little too insensitive for people who are who are who are still 50-50 in passing or in in getting to their internship. I'm sorry, Sir Marco, if it sounds a little too a little too insensitive for people. Mamamaya kasi may mga 50-50 dito eh. Um, um, when you go to your internships, if you have if you pass this subject, all right, you will undergo an internship and the rotation will still be in several sections clinical chemistry microbiology hematology uh, what else clinical microscopy histopathology blood bank and phlebotomy kasama pa rin si phlebotomy all right so in actual in in other countries phlebotomy is a separate profession it can be performed not just by medical technologists it can be performed by people who actually trained to become a phlebot phlebotomist. And that's the reason why Senator Angara wants to, which means also that there is supposed to be a separate salary grade for the different practices. That's the reason why it is an important law for us. Because if sometimes here in the Philippines, the phlebotomist gets more, gets more, uh, gets a higher, a higher salary than the, an actual medical technologist who is working in the laboratory. All right, and the and the phlebotomist could be a nurse, could be anybody who graduated from from a healthcare profession. All right, that's the reason why this is an important one for us. Okay, and imagine, my God, intern pa ako nyan, my God, I could still remember February twenty eighth is my rotation in histopathology in Manila Central University. Um, uh, Philemon D. Tanchonko uh, uh, Medical Foundation. Ang haba. MCU, FTT, MF na lang. Alright? So, yeah. Alright? So, let's move on. Um, we're going to start with section 2. So, nage, nage, na, may, medyo nadagdagan ba ang ating kaalaman, guys? Huh? Before I, before I before I continue on with the other one, medyo, na, medyo, medyo nadagdagan ba? Medyo na na enlighten ba ang mga students natin? Madami pong nadagdag, sir. Oh, thank you, Alipio. Because I don't want it to be a subject that is that is boring. I know when I was a student, I just I just received notes. Okay, honestly, I'm not going. I'm not throwing this as a shade to my previous to my previous professors, but it was such a boring subject for me. All right, uh, there are certain things that there are certain things that. I didn't know what a what is an RA, what is a PD. Actually, when uh, even when I took the board exam, I didn't know what those things were. And if they do, if my if my if the student doesn't know what those things are, um, how how interesting a subject uh, the the interest the, the interest uh, the interest to the subject is going to be lessened. All right, so. That's why I started with this one. Usually, we would start with history. We'll talk about the history of medical technology probably at the back, at the back now, all right? Because we're going to we're going to go at it and and approach it in a different way, all right? Now let's move on to the thirty-two sections of um, medical technology. Uh, of course, uh, section one is title. That's the reason why I asked you guys earlier, all right? Section two is the definition of our practice, the definition of terms, all right? What are the exclusive duties and responsibilities of a medical technologist according to Section 2 of RA 5527? Let me, 
let me tell you uh, let me uh, let me emphasize that it is the exclusive duties of a medical technologist later on you will find out you will find out when i talk about the history of medical technology you'll find out why this section is important and why it has been amended several times all right all right so this is the the exclusive duties of a medical technologist is that they are the people who ex examine the excretion secretions and tissues they do blood bank procedures and techniques they do microbiology and parasitology techniques and histopathology and cytotechniques cytoto cytotechniques all right cytopathologic techniques actually it's supposed to be cytopathologic techniques but apparently but apparently my my secretary forgot to write cytopathologic techniques all right so those are the exclusive duties for a medical technologist according to the law also there are some responsibilities that may not be exclusive for the profession but they are still allowed to do this clinical research clinical laboratory quality control is important also the preservation of reagents and standards and the preservation and collection of specimen that's the reason why there are certain job opportunities for all of us you can't just be a clinical you can't be you can't just be a laboratory techni technologist for the rest of your life maybe you want to branch to clinical research that's why that is the reason why um, the research Insti institute of tropical medicine when i was young was all the rage right now because we don't just uh, when we exp when we graduated from uh well when i graduated it was, it was all the rage back then because it sounds cool you would be a, your your job description if you if you graduated amongst your peers everybody would just be considered as a medical technologist but uh if you were hired by a six with a six month con contract from um research in from the research institute of medical of tropical medicine they would oftentimes uh they would oftentimes give you the title of clinical researcher all right or assistant clinical researcher which sound which sounds cool but basically what you're doing is just medical technology all right so um that's a re that's the reason why it is included also in our practice clinical laboratory qc i know it's done by by it's done by uh by the clinical laboratory on a daily basis but there are other professions such as chemical engineers um, biomedical engineers who do laboratory it's not solely for our profession but it, we, it can be done all right the preparation of reagents chemists can do it i don't know if there's chemists there's still a chemist uh there is a chem there's still a chemistry degree being sent out in the, uh, there's being there's a, there's still a chemistry degree but i remember mapua is still the only one there is one of the few colleges in the philippines correct me if i'm wrong sir uh, sir marco but i think mapua is the only one and um your alma mater uh, who is uh the only couple uh, the only universities in the philippines who still offer uh, chemistry the bs chemistry degree i'm not sure if that's if that if that still holds but ust ust is one of the 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 royal and pontifical university of santo tomas is actually one of the few uh one of the few uh universities in the philippines who still offers chemistry all right as a degree all right bs chemistry the other one is the preservation and the collection of specimens biology student biology graduates can do uh specimen collection but the but medical technologists can still do that all right so that's why when i was uh, when i was your age uh when i was your age i used to work at a morgue or a funeral parlor would you believe it I worked as a few uh I worked as a um morgue assistant when I graduated because when I graduated I did not receive my license yet. I was when I was 21 years old when I graduated. I passed the exam when I was I passed the exam when I was 19 years old. It took me a couple of months to get my license because I needed to wait for my birthday because in in our country you cannot receive a license if you are not yet at the age of 21. So I had to work as a lab, as a lab assistant slash a morgue technician in in Purinaria Pass. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's just a little some, some just a little insight for you guys to because uh, I don't want to be hired as a lab technician because they don't want to change. They would not. They would. Uh, they would change. They wouldn't change my job title, and I think that would be important for career advancement. So I I started to moonlight here and there. Um, and 
one of the exciting prospects one of the most exciting prospects back then is to work with the dead and i'm not i'm not uh, i'm not very i'm not very squeamish so i think i did i, I did a pretty I, I did a pretty good job when i was younger all right younger grabe naman parang ang tanda ko na oh my god who here knows how old i am <laughs> Sino sa tingin, sino dito makakasagot how, how old I am? Hoy, hoy, wala. Hala? Hoy, hala, anong kaguluhan yan? Sir Marco, napaka-insulting ng studyante na to. Can we remove him from the class? Charot. Charot lang, charot lang. <laughs> charot lang. Okay, he, that is so rude. I want, I want to say something. When he said the word... When he said 32, when he said 32, I, sa I said, the cheek, the gall, the nerve, the audacity. Girl! <laughs> Lapa, ano ako dun, ha? No, but actually, Rachel is correct. I'm 32. Gusto ko lang etchus si Rachel. <laughs> All right. All right, so, um, yeah. Uh, moving on to our... discussion all right so section three talks about the council of medical technology um transcribe what it is what are the comp what is the composition of this council that we're talking about um well the composition is as follows you're going to have the the director uh or the chair or the director is basically the the uh the chair is basically the director of the higher education commission or now it's ched okay the commissioner of higher education. The vice chair is the PRC commissioner, of course. And then we have the members, the director of the BRL. I'll ask you guys what, that, what the meaning of that one is. The, the members include also a me one member from the, uh, the board of medical technology, the president of PSP, the president of PAMET, and the pre representatives from the deans and schools of medical technology and public health, PASMET. Okay, pass math. All right, so let's transcribe one of the most important things, of course. This is going to be asked in your exam, probably. Um, not sure. But what is BRL? Anybody can answer what is BRL? BRL. Let's go at it one by one. BRL. Anybody? I need to hear voices. What is BRL? Anybody? Can anybody help me? BRL. Ah, uh, Francis said, uh, no. Francis said, Francis said DS DLSU. Okay, so thank you for correcting me earlier. All right. Okay, so what do you mean by BRL, guys? BRL. Anybody? Uh huh? Huh? I'm I'm asking you to transcribe what BRL is. Ano, Rangel, ano pinagsasabi mo? I'm asking you what the meaning of. Ah, uh, okay, o sige. Um, Sir Marco, pakitandaan po yung sinabi niya na yan, ha? <laughs> All right, Bureau of Research Laboratories. Yun po ang tamang sagot. Thank you, Ana Jamema. Bureau of Research Labor Research and Laboratories. Thank you, Ana. What about PSP? This is something that is important to us also. PSP. Hindi siya KSP. PSP. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody there? Hello, hello. What about PSP? What do you mean by PSP? Oh, bibigyan ko na kayo ng ano. Yung mga may balak magmedisina dyan, dadaan kayo dyan. Philippine Society of... Oh yes, yan. Kung may balak kayo magpathologist, dadaan kayo sa mga kamay nila. Sila ang nagbibigay ng grade. Ay, sila ang nagbibigay ng uh, fellowship at saka ng ano. Anong tawag doon? Ng fellowship or speciality. board exams ng mga pathologists. Okay? So, Philippine Society of Pathologists. The president of PAMET, of course. PAMET is the Philippine Association of Medical Technology. PASMET is Philippine Association of Medical Technology and Public Health. 
PASMET. Ano pang ibig sabihin ng PASMET pala? PASMET is um, Philippine Association of Medical Technology Schools pala dapat siya. PASMET. FISMETs na ata siya ngayon, if I'm not mistaken. Please correct me if I'm wrong because I haven't been in the Philippines for a very long time. Um, FISMETs na ata siya ngayon. Alright? So, PAMET. Alright? Next. The amendment of RA 5527 clearly specified the council members of specific of medical technology. So tandaan natin yung kanina nating ano, kanina nating discussion. This amendment is Presidential Decree 1534. Ah iba pa yung PISMET, sir? Ah uh, okay, all right. So please kindly um okay. Ah, okay, 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 okay. So, PISMET, pa, PASMET pala is, ano, is the one for schools and the deans. Basically, these are, this is a an organization for all the deans of all in the Philippines. So, uh, whether you, whether your school, if your school is offering, um, if your school is offering the subject, uh, the course of ba ma uh, Bachelor of Science of Medical Technology, you might be, your school might be included in this one. Um, I don't know if, um, I don't know if Capital Medical is included as a member yet, but your professor will be, would be the one to answer that one. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, PD1534 is actually the amendment that clearly specifies the the council and the members all right what is the council and what is the members of the of the council of medical technology or the comt all right so let us talk about them one by one what are the what are the council mem who are the council members all right all right so who are the council members the council members include wait oh sorry Nasaan na ba ang ano ko? Council members. Nasaan na ang aking handy dandy notebook? Nasaan na yun? Ay, bakit blank siya talaga? In, napaka in, in, incomplete talaga lagi, lahat ng ano ko, ng notes ko for today. Alright, I thought I would be ready. Uh, but anyway, the Council of Medical Technology basically just in, uh, is something that I discussed earlier. It's the, uh, supposed to be just a repeat, uh, a repeat slide. But um, anyway, I want you guys to just know that this is the members of the uh, Council of Medical Technology. Okay, so the P the the Ched Director or the Ched Commissioner, the PRC Commissioner, the Director of BRL, the a member from BOMT, so one member from BOMT, and the uh, President of the PSP the president of PAMET, and a representative from PASMET. All right? Okay? So clear? Clear, clear? Cool beans? Can we move on? All right? So who is the, pa the current PAMET president? Yun pala yung slide ko na to, kaya blank ko siya. Who is the current PAMET president? Anybody? Sino? Sinong, sinong Marco Flores? Bakit Marco Flores? Hoy, sino? Paki pakiulit nga, nagulat ako. Bakit Marco Flores ang ano? Naloka ako sa iyo. Wala ba lang, wala lumabas? Ay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ayun, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry naman po. Sorry po, sorry po. Hindi nagii-inform yung ano natin. Sorry po, sorry po, sorry po. Hindi ko na ano. All right, entire screen. Ayun. Okay. So who is the ano um mali yung answer na Marco Flores ha. Kayo talaga nakaka kayo. Bakit ganon? Sino? The Seda. All right. What about the PASMET president? Blacklisted daw kami. <laughs> bali bali talaga to si Sir Marco. Nabuang talaga to si ano, Dean Bernard Ebuen. All right, these are correct answers. Thank you so much. Alright. Actually, ginugal ko lang siya yesterday. Uh, ginugal ko lang siya yesterday. So yeah, those answers are correct. Alright. So next, let's move on to section 4. Section 4, the scope of the practice of medical technology. This was amended several times as well. So the, that is the, the practice basically what we dis is what we discussed earlier. Um, examination of blood and body fluids and tissue histopathologic techniques, blood bank techniques, microbiology, and parasitology techniques. Those are the scope of the practice. That is the scope of our practice. Anything beyond that is not exclusive, but may be 
part of our job as me a medical technologist and maybe a part of your job is if you actually pass this class. All right? So inspiration time tayo, di ba? Inspiration. Maybe if you pass this class, you will be you will say to your parents, "My job includes the following mother and father. I am capable. I am allowed to do blood banking techniques, microbiology and parasitology techniques, histopathology and cytopathologic techniques, and also examination of your blood, body fluids, and tissues." Gaganon ka. I am a, I am one of the few people who is in who is. Uh, who is enlightened and educated to do these things, mother and father. Alright? So, ang, ang, ang kapatid ko na isang architect, hindi siya pwedeng humawak ng body fluids ng ibang tao at sasabihin ito ang resulta. O di ba ganun? Para, may, para pwede kayong mag-flex. Kasi kung usong-usong ngayon mag-flex sa Pilipinas, di ba? Kasi lit, ang, lit na ngayon ang society natin. Alright? <laughs> Okay, pinatatawa ko lang kayo guys. Hindi ko alam kung natawa kayo. Alright? Okay, now what are the functions of the COMT? Well, they have four functions. Okay, according to, under section 5, the functions of COMT, this is again another question in your class, another question in your exam, it might come out as this way. Which of the following is not a function of the, the Council of Medical Technology under section Section 5 of 5527. This might be a question. So guys, lagyan nyo na siya ng linya. Lagyan nyo na siya ng red na dot. Diba? Recommend the minimum required curriculum. Ano ba ang minimum required curriculum natin? Guys, you have to take in the... This is, that's the reason why... Um, that's the reason why the members of your, of your Council of Medical Technology is these people. Look at the chair. Look at the vice chair. The commissioner. He, she is the, he or she is the one that prepares the board exam. He is, we or she is the one that approves your your college what subjects to teach or whether or not your 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 college can teach this particular professional professional bachelor's degree. All right. So that's one of the reasons or one of the re, one of the functions to me, to recommend a required curriculum. They determine the number of medical technology students as well. Especially right now. Hirap na hirap tayo ngayon dahil lahat tayo naka, ano, naka face-to-face -face classes ba? Hindi. Naka online classes tayo ngayon. Kaya yan, isa yan sa mga, isa yan sa mga actions ng department ng CHED. Alright? The, Com the Commission on Higher Education. Alright? They also approve medical technology schools. Alright? So before 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 nakapagturo si Sir Marco sa inyong eskwelahan at saka si Ma'am Tin mag matulak kailangan mo nang i-approve yung school hindi pwedeng basta-basta magtayo ng eskwelahan si Sir Marco na oh nag-o-offer ako ng, B ng ng BSMT na subject hindi pwede yon di ba kailangan merong dadaanan ng mga proseso and isa sa mga proseso na yon is uh, is the fa is the one of the reasons why we have section 5 Alright, and lastly is to recommend the refresher course, especially those who failed the exam three times. So I have a friend. Um, I'll, before we continue on with the other uh, with the other um, sections, I have a friend who failed the exam three times. Actually, four times pa. Hindi hindi tinuru. Eh, after nung fourth time niya, bumalik ako ng Pilipinas. Tinuruan ko siya ng bonggang bongga. Tinuruan ko siya. Hindi siya pwedeng lumabas hanggat hindi niya masasagot yung mga questions ko. Ganun ako ka-intense talaga sa mga klase ko dati. So, I have a friend early. I have a friend before I um, who failed the exam three times. And actually, uh, if you failed the exam in the Philippines, you need to take a refresher course. Alright? Kaya medyo nakakakaba pag naka-strike two ka na. Sabi ko, oh my gosh, kapag ka hindi pa ako nakapasa ng exam, I will have to take the refresher course. So, they are the ones who formulate the refresher course. Whether whether or not you... They would recommend, um, for example, you took the exam this year. You failed the exam several times. March 2023. Uh, kailan sila, sila ga-graduate? Um, hopefully, Sir Marco. Uh, 2023? 2023. Tentatively pa lang, ha? Hoy, wala akong sinasabing ka-graduate ako. Baka mamaya niya, hindi pala maganda ang grade din nyo. Baka mamaya, baka mamaya ako ang habulin. No? Baka mamaya ako ang habulin. So, 2023. This June. This June? 
This June, yung iba? Woo! Excited na ako. Gusto ko i-message nyo ako pag nakagraduate na kayo. Alright. Anyway, let's continue. Um, so, for example, for example, si friend ko, nag, nag-fail siya this year ng 2023. Uh, nag-take siya ng exam March 2023. Failed. Alright, lakas ng loob, mag-take ulit ng exam. September yung next, September board exam. Failed ulit. Next year, 2024, nag-fail ulit siya. Alright? The grades that he took, that the grades that will be, the grades that he got from all three subject, from all three board exams will be collected and then they would recommend kung ano ang courses na kukunin For example, lagi siya bumabagsak sa hematology at saka sa microbiology. Now the Council of Medical Technology can approve uh, can approve for a refresher course. This I think when I was still studying in the Philippines, um, the source of uh, the the source of the uh, the the only school requ- that can per- that can formulate a refresher course for or that can that can give a refresher course for faili- for a failed examinees who failed the exam three times is CEU Menjola. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but they would. you need to go to CEU Menjola for your refresher course. But of course, you have to reach out to PRC as well as to, to the Council of Medical Technology to appeal whether or not you require a refresher course. Because there are cases na hindi, hindi yun na kailangan ng take ng refresher course. Now, si friend ko, nag-take siya ng refresher course, he had to go to PRC to collect the grades that he got. And then, and then, the i think uh, i don't know where he went but he went to i don't know where he went after going to prc but uh i think it's a uh, commission on higher education kasi hindi na siya pwede, hindi na siya inalaw na magtake ng fourth time unless mag- magpakita siya ng ano magpakita siya ng form na ah, i attended the refresher course for one semester of this and this subject okay so after that, he took the he took the refresher course in CEU, and then he was able to finally to finally sit in for the exam. So yung fourth try niya, ako na talaga ang ako na talaga ang humarang sa ano niya sa pagtake niya ng exam. Every day for three months before his board exam, nandun siya sa bahay ko, nagsasagot ng mga ganto kong mga notes. Ay yung mga yung mga mga ano ko na to, mga PowerPoint ko na to na slides. Okay? Every day, hindi siya pwedeng lumabas. Hindi siya pwedeng lumabas ng kwarto para, para kumain. <laughs> hindi, siya pwedeng, hindi siya pwedeng lumabas ng kwarto para kumain. Hanggat hindi siya nakaka... Hindi niya nasasagot yung isang slide na nasa harap niya. So, ganun ako ka-intense. Kapag kasi namin intense, intense talaga at, at talagang magugutom ka. Kaya, kaya, ma, kaya, kaya, after that, pumasa na siya. O, di ba? almost um 80% ang nakuha niya 80% ata parang parang 80 80.39% ang nakuha niya which is a good grade actually as uh considering that he got 74.5 75.5 uh, 73.5 and then 73 73 again on her th- on his third try which was a, which was a good thing so kung na problema kayo i offer an intensive class pag umuwi ako sa Pilipinas no sir marco Pagka nahihirapan kayo, I offer an I offer an intensive class kasi gustong-gusto kong pinagpapahirap ng mga tao. Yung hindi ka kakain hangga hindi ka nakaka hindi mo nasasagot ang ano, ang hindi ka naka, hindi mo nasasagot. Yeah. Yeah, totoo talaga 'yun, sir. Uh, pagka ano, pagka in-invite mo ulit. Mm-mm. Hindi ko talaga siya pinapakain. Sabi ko, hindi ka pwedeng suma- hindi ka pwedeng kumain hangga hindi ka nakakapag-compute ng creatinine clearance. Bahala ka diyan. Doon siya nakalak siya doon sa kwarto ko. Kasi ayoko siya kasi ganun ko love ang ganun ko kalaba ang mga friends ko na ayoko makita na magfail sila. Kasi nag Crayola very light talaga siya sa very much talaga siya sa ano ko. Nag Crayola talaga siya ng bonggang-bongga bongga sa ano sa harap ko nung Oo. Oh, oh. Oo oh, oh, talaga. Ikaw ba naman desperado ka na makakain? Just ko sabi ko sa sabi, totoo totoo Sir Mark. Uh, Sir Marco. 7 o'clock hindi niya masagot yung yung clinical chemistry question ng isang slide. Nandun ako sa gilid, naglalaro lang ako ng naglalaro lang ako. I think Dragon Nest was of the rage back then. Um, hangga't hindi siya nakakasagot, bahala ka diyan. Dito lang ako sa gilid. Ang nanay ko kakunchaba ko, ang nanay at tatay niya kakunchaba din namin. Sabi ng nanay at tatay niya, "Wag kang kakain hangga't <laughs> sige lang kung ano yung recommendations ng ano, <laughs> ano lang recommendations na kaibigan mo na nagtuturo ng subject na mga, mga ganyan. Hindi sundin mo lang." And 
what happened? What happened was clinical chemistry was one of his one of his highest uh, highest uh, scores in the board exam, diba? So effective paleng negative reinforcement ko, all right? And let's go with the under section one. What is the minimum co required course to be to be a medical technologist? You have to take to take a four year course with a twelve month internship program. All right. So the course wa before was uh, you have to take a cer certain classes. But right now, because of the modernization of our practice, you are no longer required to follow that one. Hence, I removed that slide. Um, but you are still required to take a four-year course. So four-year subjects prerequisite to your prof professional subjects. So first year and second year, you're going to take chemistry subjects, physics, um, English, um, the basic things. And then in the third years, you will only have I think one minor subject, which is community development, and what else is there? Uh, Non-professional subject. What else? Community development and cytogenetics. If I'm not mistaken, these are subjects that you can that you can that you can uh, that you can that that is not going to be tested in the board exam. If I'm not mistaken, uh, pharmacology also. Prerequisite for because it's a prerequisite for um, endocrinology and toxicology, if uh, if memory serves me right, okay. I think it's it still holds true. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sir Marco, but I hit, I think it still holds true uh, up to this day. All right. Actually, in your in your college, I was able to teach. I was one of the people who teach who taught um, who taught uh, community development. Which was a special subject. I I taught it in a span of several w weeks only, and it was such a fun class. I wish I could do that again. All right. So anyway, um, section seven is the the board of medical technology. The composition of the board of medical technology is as follows: a pathologist. The chairman would be, serve as the pathologist. We have two members uh, of the board and. The years in office is going to be at least three years. The terms in office is at least three years. And this is appointed by the President of the Philippines. So imagine if your president, if the president that we're voting for does not have an idea what our profession is. He would he could just appoint some 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 a random person who could be the chairman of that one. He could take uh he could take anybody from any laboratory. Okay? So that's why. That's why it is important for you guys to at least know who your president will be. All right, what is his what is his political agenda or what it is, what his party agenda is? All right, because for the next three years, these are the people who will decide the fate of our practice. Because three years, guys, oh, appointed by the president. Okay, so be mindful of that one. All right. So later on, we will discuss who is the uh, current board. Ah, yeah. All right. So uh, the current board members of, of the medical technology. Our my source is the PRC website. Uh, yeah, this is this is a uh, this is a this is a slide that I usually annotate because I know that it will it will change uh, it will change from time to time when I deliver this uh, when I deliver this lecture. But Doctora Marilyn A. Marilyn A. Barza. Actually, before she was Dr. Marilyn A. Cabal, when I was still a student. Um, now she's... Uh, no, no, no. She's not the one. Um, a different person. When I was still teaching uh, way back in 2016, she was, she was still the chairman. But she was single back then. But now she is married. Cabal Barza. She's now Barza. All right? And Miriam T Tantinko is... another. Uh, Marian Tantinko is a board member. And actually... These two people were present for the pa during the pandemic, uh, during the pandemic board exams. All right, Marilyn Atienza is a board member, but she was absent during the medical the March 2022 board exams. All right, um, if you look uh, if you look at the PRC website, her name is not included in the medtech boards, but she is still a member. She she died. Oh. Or rest in peace, because she's actually one of the few people who prepared exams. Or I don't know where I don't know if she, where if she graduated from UST. Also, um, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, but I I remember one of these three people. She they graduated from UST. One one is a one is a graduate from uh, University of the Philippines, um, public health course. Yeah. All right. So I'm not sure. 
she was not included in the medtech uh, 2022 boards but which means that which means that sir marco you are you are you could be a candidate to be a member of the board uh, no no you have you must not be affiliated with any board uh, with any faculty position pala for the for at least 10 years for at least a year pala so hindi ka pala pwede pa rin, sir marco all right um, ako, pwede pala ako. Oh my God, I am, oh my gosh, I am, a, I can be a candidate. Oh my gosh, I could be a candidate. Malay nyo, baka mamaya isa na ako sa gumagawa ng mga board exams inyo. Mag-apply nga ako. Ay, hindi. Um, um, pwede ko na bang sabihin, Sir Marco, na ako ang gagawa ng exam nila? Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm so mean. Yung exam ko kasi kapag ka ako ang nagtuturo ng ano, uh, I'm assuming my students are attorneys. Alright? Kailangan parang ang, gusto ko ang pag-iisip ninyo kapag ka puupo kayo sa exam ko for medtech laws is you have the mind of an attorney. Alright? Because my questions are like this. I'll give you an example. Marco Flores is a practicing medical technologist for 15 years. He has he ha, he could apply for which of the following positions, high positions in the in in the Philippines: Council of Medical Technology, board board member, none of the above, either or both. mga ganon yung mga question ko. Parang pang abugas siya, di ba? Or or Rainier Ursia is a medical laboratory technician employed in the CMCC clinic. La- clinical laboratory graduated at the age of at the age of I don't know how old he is but 19 according to which section according to which section of the of RA 5527 which uh, which of the fo- sorry which of the following sections prevents uh, which uh, uh, which of the following sections would prevent him to get a license. Diba? Mga ganun yung mga sagot ko. Gusto ko para kayong nag-aabugas siya. Diba? Imagine nyo. Diba? Ganun ang mga questions ko. Diba? Am I, am I, I'm allowed to do that, right? As long as it's related to the exam. Correct, Sir Sir Marco? Alright? So, hindi pa pumapasok yung ano doon. Hindi pa pumapasok yung Clinical Laboratory Act. Yes! Multiple choice pa rin ako. <laughs> Gusto ko kasi 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 guys, ganto ang ano ko, ganto ang thinking ko. If you did not pass my exam or if you passed my exam, I can probably say that you are ready for the board exam. All right? All right? Because it means that you are able to understand and grasp or even memorize the concepts, the basic concepts of the, exa- the subject material. All right? Because I tend to uh, ask questions that stimulates the brain and, and, and um, um, initiates your brains to undergo critical thinking state, a uh, critical thinking state. All right? So it's not just, oh, okay, Marilyn, Marilyn Cabell Barza is the current chairman of... Uh, no, you're not going to get that kind of exam with me. Oh, no, no, no. All right? You're not going to get that kind of exam with me. That's why you have to listen to the lectures. If you don't listen to the lectures, you're, you're still fine. All right? You're still fine. But you might be handicapped in the exam. All right? You might, be, you might not be able to answer the exam because sometimes I... I tend to I tend to say things that is actually what is one of the questions that I will ask in the exam. All right? Mua, de ba? Hinta. Ah ah. Hmm. Right? Yeah. So kung pag critical thinkers ka, um. Oh. Yeah. And and seminar is actually one of your what is actually seminar in my school is considered as the dry run. If you're uh, actually in my school, they would uh, they would prevent you from taking the board exam if you failed seminar. Yeah. 
So meron ako mga kaklase, 5 years na silang nagte-take ng medtech kasi hindi sila makapasa ng ano. Tapos na sila ng internship pero seminar hindi pa rin sila tapos. May mga kaklase ako, 5 years na, two, y- two years lang ang agwat namin, tapos nakikita ko kaklase ko pa rin after fourth year. So, um, it's, uh, it's time for you guys to be ready. Alright? And actually, you are you are lo- very lucky because you have a lot of a lot of opportunities to, or sources to learn from. Right now, I'm offering, I'm giving you after this lecture, you're going to get a PowerPoint presentation. You are also allowed. You will you will also be allowed to act. You will also be allowed access to my and I have I made an exclusive um, YouTube video for you guys so, for you to watch, diba? So in my time, ang um, ginagamit ko lang is ito. Alam nyo kung ano to? Yung mga post-it notes. Ito ang mga ginagamit ko kapag ka nagre-review ako dati. Nasa jeep ako niya, nagbabasa pa rin ako niyan. The Council of Medical Technology is composed of these people. One, one, one pathologist, two medical technologists who are registered. Alright? So, qualifications of the board na tayo. Alright? Ano sabi ni Adrian? Akala ko mababawi kami sa MT loss gawa ng mahirap ang histopat. Hindi po pala. Ah, histopat. Oh gosh. Ayoko magsalita diyan. <laughs> Ayoko. Ayoko magsalita diyan. I work in I work in histopathology. I love to work in histopathology because it's one of the most chill uh, uh it's one of the most chill sections in actual practice but in in lecture mode, uh hinulaan ko lang lahat ng sagot ko diyan. Binawi ko sa medtech loss. Anyway, kasi actually for me mas madaling mag-memorize kaysa mag-memorize ng mas madami ng madaming stains. <laughs> okay? All right. So, qualifications of the board members of the Board of Medical Technology. You have to be of course one a Filipino citizen, a good good moral character, and you have to be either a, a pathologist or a medical technologist. You have to be at least capable of you have to be practicing lab medicine or pathology or a medical technologist for at least 10 years prior to your appointment. Ah hindi pa pala ako pwede Sir Marco. Hindi pa pala ako pwede. Kasi kailangan ano 8 years pa lang ako in practice eh. I'm not also sure if practice um away from the country is included in this one. Si sabi ko nga sa inyo nung ginawa yung batas natin, wala namang pala wala kaya nga important yung modernization act, 'di ba? Na ginawa ni Senator Angara noong 2010. Ay noong 2011. Why? Because hindi naka-indicate dito kung practice in the Philippines or practice abroad. 'Di ba? Kita mo? Kita nyo? Kita nyo? Oo. So kailangan kailangan nating matandaan na ano. O di ba malay nyo, One of the one of the one of the members in this class um would be a would be given the chance or the opportunity to go for a higher position, by either as a congressman or as a senator. Who knows? We know we never know what ha- would happen, right? I don't know, baby, yung pulit, yung influence ni yung influence ni Adrian. Magulat na lang tayo mamaya niyan. Vote for Adrian Cummings in ano in for a senatorial spot nagulat na lang ako di ba malay natin o kaya yung si Reynel kana kinikeme keme lang natin ngayon yan si si Reynel gulat ka mamaya niyan ano na pala siya ano na pala siya uh, 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 esteemed member of uh, of PAMET and then afterwards naging ano pala siya naging member naging board member pala siya so we never know that's why i want you guys at uh, uh, at the end of this class i want you guys to have a different appreciation of our profession or the profession that you're entering. All right? So not uh, not a faculty member for at least 2 years prior to appointment. All right? So extra talaga yun si Sir Marco. All right? Extra extra talaga si Sir Marco kasi ibig sabihin kasi ano ba ang function ng board? Sila yung gumagawa ng board exam kasi at saka yung nagfa-facilitate ng board exam. Kaya nga tingnan niyo ang mga members natin, oh, pathologist, members na uh, an RMT. Okay? So um, I assume they are the best and the brightest. Uh, the, the, the representative that are the best and the brightest. Um, I'm not yet. Sh- I'm not sure kung kino consider nila yon. All right. So anyway, let's cons- let's go to the executive officer of the board of uh, technology. 
uh, Board of Medical Technology, so the BOMT, the Executive Officer of the Board of Medical Technology is of course the PRC Commissioner. Ang daming trabaho ni PRC Commissioner, guys. Member na siya. Siya na ang Chairman ng Council of Medical Technology. Siya pa ang Executive Officer. Bakit? Ano ba ang trabaho ng Executive Officer ng, ano, ng, ng Board Member? Siya kasi ay isang attorney. Ay, siya, siya si Attorney Erwin Inad. M. Inad. Alright? PRC Commissioner. Um, he was appointed March 9, 2022, all right? according to the PRC website. And one of their jobs is to do the following. All right? So they administer, uh, so under section, under section, uh, sorry, under section, <coughs> section 11, their functions include administering the provisions of 5527. So sila yung, na, sila yung tumitingin kung talagang may nagpa-practice pa. Sila ang unang-unang sinusumbungan kapag ka merong ano nang mga, may mga lumalabag ng batas natin. Alright? They are also the ones who administer oath-taking procedure, uh, oath-taking processes. So baka makita nyo si uh, Doktora Cabal Raza. Okay? Um, at saka si, at saka yung isa nating board member. Alright? Kapag ka nakapasa kayo, hopefully, all right? Wink wink, diba? All right? They issue er, they are the ones also to issue and suspend or revoke the certificate of registration. All right? And they also investigate. So not only do they administer the exams, they also uh uh they also administer the provisions, they also administer the oath taking. And they are capable of issuing, suspending, and revoking your COR. And also the investigative process after that one. So for example, for example, friend ko, nag-blood type na, nag-blood bank, nag-trabaho sa blood bank. Usually kasi blood bank ang may mga problema ng mga malala eh, na kailangan investigahan ni, investigahan ng PRC at saka ng ano, ng PRC at saka ng, ng Board of Medical Technology. Usually, Usually, may investigation process dyan na nangyayari. So, internal from the hospital itself, okay? Kapag ka nag-escalate, dyan aabot yan sa ano natin, sa, ba, sa Board of Medical Technology. And what happens is, there would be like there would be like an investigation. O, bakit nangyayari ito? Sila yung mag-check. Registered ba ito? Bakit ang kapal ng mukha nito mag-blood bank? Registered ba ang lab nito? Ganun yung, mga, ganun yung investigation process nila. Pwede ba tong mag pwede ba tong mag maggawa ng ano? Kaya kailangan tandaan niyo itong mga tin sinasabi ko kasi baka mamaya in the may question ako in the invest during the investigative the investigation process. The laboratory was found to be only registered as a secondary laboratory. Which of the following sections include uh, which of the following violations is the laboratory capable not ca is the laboratory capable of doing as a test to be a secondary laboratory. Blah 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 blah. blah. Mga ganun yung mga ano ko, mga questions ko guys. So, pang abogado talaga. Alright? Now, let's move on to section 12, which is the removal of board members. Alright? So, what is the, how is, a, how is a board member removed? Remember that these people are, these people are, <clears throat> these people are appointed by the president and they can be removed by the president. Alright? So, be mindful of that one. Alright? May underline siya. Can only be removed by the President of the Philippines, either with either it's neglect, malpractice, or immoral conduct. So that's the reason also why the PRC was uh, was uh, what they call this was the one that was one of the people who are being called out during the scandal ng isang famous plastic surgeon sa Philippines. Hindi ko siya sa sabi hindi to sa may lecture natin, kasi bakamamaya. May makapanood ng video ko sa YouTube, mabash tayo. So, hindi ko sasabihin. So, PRC is actually the one who will be able, to, who will recommend the removal of a particular person's license. Di ba meron tayong plastic surgeon sa Philippines? Alright? Meron tayong plastic surgeon sa Philippines na may ginawang skandal noon. And then, ang unang-unang nilapitan is PRC. And then, si PRC ipo-forward niya ang recommendation sa, sa President of the Philippines. Alright? Oo. Panahon ni Aquino. Panahon. Hindi <laughs> naman makikita yan sa YouTube eh. Mga walang hiya talaga ito mga tao na ito. <laughs> mga walang hiya kayo talaga. Kayo talaga ha. Hindi ko na kami nakalanan tapos ilagay nyo pa. Sino ba yan?
Hindi ko talaga Senator Cummings, ha? Hindi <laughs> ko talaga, ha? Alright. Future Senator. So, accreditation of medtech schools and training lab laboratories. So, a medtech school is, is accredited by the CHED and a training laboratory is, of course, accredited by the DRL. Alright? So, what is a training laboratory? Okay? What is a training laboratory? Can somebody... Uh, can somebody help me out here? I don't know what a training laboratory is. Kunwari, hindi ko alam. What is a training laboratory? Sige. Charisa, Charis, look, look, look. Hindi na nun kayang gumawa ng ano. Hoy, hindi na nun kayang gumawa ng, ng scandal. Ikaw talaga nakakalok ka. I mean, I mean, come on, girl. Alright, so what is a training laboratory? For internship. For internship lang ba? For internship lang? Sa, Pilip Hoy, sa Pilipinas, meron tayong HIV proficiency, di ba? Meron tayong HIV proficiency, ano pa? Um, Nagpapasilitate din tayo ng AFB trainings, yung mga tsaka malaria trainings. So that is actually one of the accreditation. Uh, that's right under the Section 13. All right. So ano pa ba yung mga ginagawa dyan? Drug testing, reference laboratory, um, how to perform, how to perform H, uh, not HIV. Uh, molecular laboratories are now uh, the, all of the rage right now. So hindi lang hindi lang yung internships, okay? Um, they also help out in they also help out in accrediting a laboratory to perform special tasks in training would be professionals in a specific field actually if uh, you were if you are going to give me uh, i don't want to i don't want to sound uh so sound very uh very anti filipino or anti philippine medtech but here in in the middle east first result na ni release ko is hiv and I was not trained to, uh, I was not trained with HIV proficiency. You know why? Um, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if the Philippines is just trying to, uh, one of the, the, one of the agenda of, of people in position is to prevent people from doing tests that are actually part of our educational system. So, in their case, I asked my pathologist, uh, my, my pathologist here in the Philippi in in the, in Saudi Arabia, why are we allowed to release what well, release HIV results as well as um, microbiology results without uh, without uh, formal training? Because uh, you know the simple answer that my 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 boss said, my pathologist said, we trust you, and we trust you. And you've already learned this in the in your in your college years. We don't, you don't need additional training. You need additional practice, or additional expo experience for the practice. Because as we mentioned before, as I mentioned before, training is not actual practice. You cannot get a you cannot get exposed to a particular a particular experience without actually doing the specific work. All right. So that's the reason. That is their. That is their. Um, that is their. Their um, thinking. You already studied for this. Why do you need extra certifications? All right. So I don't want to sound. I don't want to. I don't want to demean our our profession. Uh, our profession there in the Philippines. But I think it's all. It's all just a. It's all just a a money making money making machine because how many how many schools in the philippines offer medical technology as a course and those people can allow can allow the graduation of several several students right out, out of those several students people would want to practice in the philippines that's the reason why a lot of medical technologists right now they just want to go and practice abroad because they can perform the tests that they want or be exposed to several sub be exposed to several um, laboratory procedures without the hassle of attending a seminar just to perform something that you've already studied for 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 two years or so right so okay so uh oh 21,000 sir 21,000 yun sa microbial so 21,000 na nagtaas na 
Kasi when I went back there in 2019, I wanted to get a I wanted to be just I wanted to be not just a medical technologist but a drug test drug tester. Uh I wanted to stay there in the Philippines because I wanted to pursue an academ- academic car- academia career but unfortunately opportunity came knocking at my door with a higher higher renumer- renum- rem- remuneration and I had to forego the the ano so dito na lang ako sa seminar mo ninyo di ba <laughs> at least I still get to do what I do uh, which is which is teaching you guys and also doing what I love practicing medical technology all right So let, let's move on to the section four, the inhibition of the practice of medical technology. What do I mean by the inhibition of the practice of medical technology? The re, um, meaning that you cannot practice medical technology unless you are a duly registered physician, a foreign medical technologist as a visiting exchange professional. So you ju- they're just here to train in a different Uh, in a different methodology. So, for example, before na uso si before na uso si cyan meth hemoglobin methodology, a foreigner discovered it, right? So, paano mapupunta ang test sa atin? Paano ma- ma-accredit ang test sa atin? Kung hindi tayo tuturuan, kailangan din natin ng foreign MTs. So, regist- registration to practice is not required for these people, foreign medical technologists as a visit and exchange professional and a medical technologist in the service of the US Armed Forces stationed in the Philippines. Now, according to our historical records, the fa- the practice of, of the professional practice of medical technology actually started with the US Armed Forces. During World War II, they went here in the Philippines and established one of the few, one of the first uh, clinical laboratories in the Philippines and therefore we owe a lot through the US in the US armed forces okay we would not have our pra- we would not have a similar uh, a similar curriculum uh, with the with the US healthcare uh, with the US uh, with the US curriculum had it not ha- had we not been visited by the US armed forces in world war 2 all right So we owe a lot of our we owe a lot to them. I mean, in in terms of practice, huh? not on other things, because you might have a we because maybe you might say I have a political agenda. But in terms of our practice, we owe so much to them because, um, from what I can gather, from what I can gather, the ed- their educational system when you train as a when you study as a medical technologist is similar to what 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 what, what is being taught here in the Philippines. So be thankful of that one. All right. Next, uh, kaya madali din tayo makapunta ng US guys. Onti lang yung kailangan nating paperwork as opposed to other other nations. All right? So, alam ko mahirap, madaming ano, madaming requirements, pero mas madali yung sa atin. Kasi parehas na parehas yung ano natin. Parehas na parehas yung parehas na parehas kumbaga yung curriculum natin sa kanila. All right? Next, examination. What are the requirements? Um, I know this is going to sound really, really repetitive, but of course you have to provide your, your transcript of records, your birth certificate, your NSO, your NSO marriage certificate if you're, if you're a married person, the community tax certificate or what we call the the cedula. Okay, you can buy it. You can buy this. Uh, you can buy a, ced- a cedula in the in the PRC uh, in the PRC location in. Where is it in near FEU yung saan nga yung ano saan nga yung PRC ano natin Sir Marco Sa ano nga yun nakalimutan ko sa Espanya ba hindi sa Espanya yun kasi sila sa kayo kulang from ano from CMCC from the CMCC from CMCC magsasakay lang ako ng ano eh sasakay lang ako na Moraita thank you so much Daniel Papa all right Thank you so much. It's in Moraita. It's in front of FEU. Meron meron doon sa loob mismo ng PRC makakabili kayo ng ano, ng tax certificate ninyo doon or cedula. So, kailangan niyo lang dalhin doon uh, actually is TOR uh, NSO birth certificate, NSO birth certificate, your marriage certificate if you're married and money for for the community tax certificate, pictures and money of course also with um, actually this last three Uh, the last two, uh, the the items D and E, um, you can all get it in the PRC location. Also, uh, I mean, I mean uh, ex- uh, exclusively there. There's a place there, but there are also other places outside. But I I doubt. Uh, I would rather you just 
bring your own kasi mas mahal. Okay? O, di ba? Tinitrain ko na talaga ako. Kasi ready ready na talaga ako para mag-take kayo ng exam. Talagang, talagang in-orient ko na kayo. Parang orientation din to sa board exam, no, Sir Marco? <laughs> para ma-inspire kayo na, oh my gosh, papasa na si, si Senator Cummings. Alright? So, how many times in a year is, a medic- is the Medical Technology Board exams held in the Philippines? I said it to you guys twice earlier. How many times? Two years, right? And what are the months? What are the months? Anybody who can answer? Um, what about... Uh, ayoko na kay ano? Ayoko na kay Adrian. Paulit-ulit lang sumasagot si Adrian. Let's ask somebody from the chat. Alright, si Francis. Sige, hindi ko narinig ang boses ni Francis ngayon. Oo, ano ang mga month? Very good. Thank you so much. So, alam mo na, kailan ka magtitake ng exam mo? Ha? Huh? Kailan ka magte-take ng exam mo? I want you to claim it. What month? Ay, ayaw mo ng March? Kailan ba ang graduation nila? Oh. I I I'm I'm um I'm I'm expecting great things from you. All right? Okay? All right. I'm expecting great things from you because you're taking the exam at sep- on September. Uh, you can actually he can actually take the exam on March, right? If I'm not mistaken, but yet he cho- he chose to take it on on March. So I'm expecting great things from you. So please tag me, Sir Marco, kapag kapumasa siya or Adrian, kasi sila, sila ang ano ko dito eh, ang ang uh, actual Facebook friends ko dito. Si Chaka sino ba si Raiden I? <laughs> All right. Okay. Now let's continue on with our discussion. Si Raiden I. Si Raiden A pala. Si Raiden A. Itago na lang natin siya sa pangalang ano. Um um Hayden Hein Susa. <laughs> All right. Okay. So how many days before the examination should a candidate file for his PRC requirements. It's actually, according to the law, 20 days before the exam. Okay? So in my school, they would often, we would often go there all together when I was in, when I was in college. But I was in the irregular class because I transferred from nursing. So there was only five of us. But uh, when, in the regular, on the regular classes, uh, on, on regular sections, they would go all together, like all 15 of us. Kasi 15 lang ang nakapasa for, for board exam eh. Nung time nung mga kaklasik ko na nas nauna sa akin. No, pero kami, lima lang kami nun. Um, may picture pa ata kami nun, Sir Marco. Isi-share ko mamaya para sa pag-break. Papakita ko sa inyo kung sino, yung mga, kung sino ang mga kasabay kong nag-exam. <laughs> Alright? So, under Section 16 of RA 5527, what is the qualifications of an individual who want to partake in the, phys- in the Philippine Board Examinations? So, aside from what I've said, you are a candidate if you graduate, if you have, a, if you have good moral character, of course. And you cannot graduate without a good moral character, of co- uh, if I'm not mistaken. And therefore, that is already that is already a given. All right, graduate of a medical technology of a medical technology course or a public health course. All right, you can be a graduate of other professions, provided that you have a, you uh, you can be a graduate of other profession, um, provided that there you satisfy the the subject matter. So if you took the exam, you took majors in microbiology, chemist, clinical chemistry, and hematology, you might be doing, you might be able to take the exam. But unfortunately, unfortunately, it is uh, in our country there is only one course that that can satisfy this one. Other professions, the third criteria, which is public health. Okay, it's actually one of the few. Uh, one of the, uh, it's actually one of the other professions that can project. So nursing, can you take it? No. All right. What about physical therapy? No. Also, it's actually, uh, we take the same subjects as 
uh, as public health. And if I'm not mistaken, one of my seatmates is a gra- another the, the, another De Leon that took the exam when I was when I was still in my formative years as a medical technologist uh, exam uh, examination candidate just to be specific, was a public health graduate. And you know what? When I asked them, how many subjects do we have similarly? We have, they, she, they said that, that she took all of it, except, except for clinical microscopy and hematology. You know, how many, how, many days they, how many days is the lecture for a public health student? Uh, how many days a public health student will take hematology and um, uh, urinalysis and analysis of body, bodily fluids, they would only take it for one week. They would just be given a handout that is, that is hematology, um, that is hematology and clinical microscopy. Study it, and we'll have a test next week. All right? So it's not officially part of their, part of their curriculum. Most of their subjects include malariology, amoebiology, bacteriology 1, 2, 3, and aerobic bacteriology. If I look, if I'm not mistaken, but, but uh, public health graduates usually have more focus, uh, more emphasis on, uh, on your microbiology subjects and parasitology subjects. Okay? All right. So graduate of other professions. You can actually, uh, you can actually uh, be waived for the practice to take the board exam if you've been performing the practice for five years prior to the promulgation of RA5527, which is uh, June 21, 1969. So unfortunately, all of these people have either have either have either perished or have already taken this one. So you're no lo- none of the people in this class can avail the waived uh, condition. All right? So none of you are 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 candidates for the last uh, no, for the last for the last criteria. Okay? Clear? Clear ba guys? Cool beans? We can move on. All right. Lex, under section 17 of RA 5527, what subject matter is tested in the medical technology board exam? These are basically just your subjects, all right? The, sub- the major subjects that you're taking. Um, clinical chemistry, hematology, microbiology and, par- microbiology and parasitology, immunology, serology, and blood banking, clinical chemistry, and of course, histopathologic techniques and Medical Technology Laws and Bioethics. O, di ba? Kasama pa rin si Medical Technology Laws. But there are relative uh, relative percentages for all of these subjects, okay? So, 20% for the core subjects, like clinical chemistry, hematology, microbiology, and immunology and serology. Um, clinical microscopy is only 10%, and histopathology and histopathologic techniques is also 10%. But, of course, if you failed in any one of them, you will not be able to. If you get a, a grade lower of 60% in any one of them, you will not be able to pass the board exam. All right? Okay, cool. Cool beans, understood? These are your subjects. Read them all. I know our subject matter is difficult because look at our subjects. Hematology, clinical chemistry and hematology, you have to analyze, you have to memorize. Microbiology, you have to memorize, you have to analyze, and you also have to interpret data given to you by given to you in case presentations. Immunology and serology and blood banking, memorize, analyze, and, and think critically what is, the, what is the diagnosis of a particular patient. So these are all things... All things considered, I would say that among the healthcare, among the among the subject matter that most college students would take uh, in the board exam, ours is considerably uh, ours is co- is considered to be hard. Uh, is of the tier of the hard tier, right? And I'm not going to mention some. I'm not going to mention some other professions, but I would say that our sub our subject matter in the board exam is extremely difficult. Okay, and not many people are able to pass it on their first try, but with constant with constant devotion to your studies, I I am sure that you will pass the board exam. All right, can we claim it? Can we guys? Can you guys claim it? And can you make some sort of agreement that you're going to open your notes? Okay, 
this time around and will not rely on additional points given to you by your lovely and loving professor sir marco can we not can we can we not rely on that one can we just pass the exams given to us of course we can do it if he did it if i did it you guys can do it as well right we're just making it difficult for you guys because we want the best for you we don't want you guys to fail the board exams because look at all of these things these things are difficult all right even if a student, even if, some, even if somebody had ident an eidetic memory, all right, they would not be able to answer the questions without actually attending a class or at least devoting half of their life or, or half of their study time of a year to study all of this. All right? So please claim it now because uh, one way for you to motivate yourself to study is actually to claim or manifest it. Diba? To manif oh, diba? manifest. Mga ano, mga, ano, ano mga keme, ang mga sinasabi ko sa inyo. Pero I am, I am hoping for the best for you guys. Alright? Report of rating. Report of rating is 120 days according to RA557, the raw version, the uncut, unfiltered version. But the amended version, the RA, with, uh, with, the, with the amendment to RA8981, which is the PRC Modernization Act, the report of the result is actually 11, 10 working days before it was 120 days before it was before it was modernized according to the RA RA8981 RA8189 is again the <coughs> PRC modernization act of 20 oh, 2020 2011 2001 pala sorry okay so you guys are very lucky the waiting time for your for your license or your or your certificate of registration is only 10 day, 10 working days imaginein mo yun guys imaginein mo yun actually ako nung na receive ko yung news na pumasa ako hindi ko hindi ako mismo ang nag-search yung kaklase ko pa ang nagsabi sa akin sabi niya sa akin Manuel pumasa ka na ako congratulations sabi ko ha hindi ko alam yun wag mo ako niloloko pagtingin ko ay oh my god pumasa nga ako o di ba Ganun lang siya kabilis. Online pa siya. Hindi mo na kailangang antayin, antayin sa Manila bulletin. As opposed to our other, uh, as opposed to our elders who took the exam. Alright? Cool? Can we move on? The ratings is discussed in section 19. Alright? The rating of the examination. The conditions that render the passing of the grade, uh, what conditions render the passing grade, a passing grade, for the Philippine Board Examination, Philippine Board Medical Technologist Board Examination. Well, to pass, you have to get the you have to have the following conditions. You have to satisfy the following conditions: a general average of seventy five percent. Hence, your passing rate here in the school seventy five percent. No grade below fifty percent in any major subject. No failed grade in sixty percent of the subjects computed following their relative weights. So, for example. For example, 5% lang ang nakuha mo sa medtech loss, babagsak ka pa rin. Alright? Kasi hindi siya 60%, 50% lang yung nakuha mo eh. For example, 50, 50 lang ang nakuha mo. Pasado ka pa rin, no grade below than ano eh. Uh, 55% pala ang nakuha mo sa medtech loss. Pero, according to the law, according to, according to the PRC, uh, according to our RA, R, uh, RA5527, Section 19, if you fail to get 60% on the subjects computed with their relative weights. So remember, 10% lang ang ano, relative weight niya, ba? 10% lang ang relative weight niya. You got 5% of, you got 5% of that 10%. You're still going to fail. Alright? You are still going to fail. For example, 55 lang ang nakuha mo na score out of 100 sa medtech laws and histopathologic techniques. You are still going to fail. Why? Because you got... 60% of the subjects computed according to their relative weights. Alright? So, please be mindful of that one. You can't just get, oh, ah, pasado ako sa may mad banking and tsaka sa immunology and, sero immunology and serology, siguro kayang hatakin yun ng grade ko. No, no, no. Nay, nay, nay. You have to at least satisfy the other conditions. Alright? You have to satisfy the other conditions. Okay? Alright? Cool? 
So hindi pwede yung hindi pwede yung and then magaling ako sa microbiology, kaya kong perfect yung microbiology. E fail ka naman sa medtech law sa tsaka sa may CM. Oh. 'Di ba? Hindi pa rin pwede 'yon. Why, why what is the what is the reason why we are why this is uh why is why is the rating criteria given to the student? Why is this rating criteria also passed in the law? Can't we just take the exam and just say pass because I took the exam? No. Why? Because you are a healthcare professional. You are required to have at least a basic understanding of the practice that you of the profession that you are currently practicing if you actually and if you did mediocre if you did a mediocre performance in the examinations that will translate to your work ethic all right that will translate to your work ethic and that is the reasoning why the, we have this kind of criteria all right we have this kind of criteria so you can't just get a several you can't just get get a 75%. So for example, hinatak ni microbiology mo. Ang galing-galing mo memorize mo lahat ng bacteria pero hindi mo naman pala memorize yung medtech laws mo. Bagsak ka pa rin. All right? Next, under section 19 of RA 5527, what will happen to a person who failed to pass the exam, the board exam thrice? Can anybody answer? Naalala niyo yung story ng friend ko? Alright, yung story ng friend ko. Don't worry guys. Don't worry. Kapag ka magte-take kayo ng board exam at nandiyan ako sa Pilipinas, you can attend my one month, my one month uh one month intensive course. 'Yun ang akin talaga. Hindi ka lalabas, hindi ka kakain, wala kang iinumin. Para kang nagano, para ka para kang naging preso sa sa medical technology. Alright? 'Di ba para mas masaya kaya 'yun, no? No guys. Kasi na diet ka na, pumasa ka pa ng board exam. Paglabas mo, oh my gosh, you have a fit body. Parang time capsule lang Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yeah. Intensive course ka talaga siya. Yes, parang yung time capsule lang ng ano. Para kang umattend ng ano, ng tas ang kakainin mo lang yung mga beans. Actually, mas malala pa nga ako sa time capsule ng sa Dragon Ball eh. Kasi sa Dragon Ball may kinakain sila ng mga beans na may energy, nagbibigay ng energy sa kanila. Sa akin wala ka talaga anything. Talagang fast ka talaga. All right? Total fasting hangga't hindi mo nasasagot yung ano mo. Nasasagot yung question mo. All right? Okay. So let's move on. Mm, failure. All right, so you're going to take a 12-month refresher course in an accredited medical technology school, 12-month postgraduate training, or a 12-month postgraduate training in an accredited laboratory. Actually, this one is uh, this one is not practiced here in the Philippines. It's most commonly the most affordable one is actually the refresher course in an accredited medical school because you're a uh, medical technology school because you just need to pay the tuition for and the units for a specific course the lecture courses actually all right not the lab courses all right so clear that's this one is the most afford affordable the postgraduate training in an accredited lab is a little too uh, a little bit a little too suspicious for me and it can be marred with a lot of corruption Kaya hindi siya pinapractice dito sa Pilipinas. Alright? Okay. So now, let's move on to oath-taking ceremonies. Yay! For example, nakapasa ka na. You failed thrice, but then you uh, you finally achieved to get that RMT uh, that RMT at the, at the end uh, part of your name. You are going to take the oath-taking. The oath-taking is under Section 20. Alright? Who administers the oath-taking ceremonies? As I mentioned earlier, it is the Board of Medical Technology or any person authorized by the board. So, for example, absent, he, um, she got sick. The chairman of the chairman of the board of, uh, sorry, yeah, the chairman of the Board of Medical Techno Technology got sick. She could, uh, she, could, uh, she could authorize another person legally to administer the board exam, uh, to administer the oath-taking. All right, and there is one thing that will uh, that I will ask you guys to read at the end of this lecture. Ito yung tinatawag natin in Tagalog na panunumpa sa pa sa pagiging professional, o di ba? Please wag yung babuyan kapag ka pumasa kayo ng board exam, wag yung gayahin yung mga kasama ko nung gumraduate ay nung nag oath taking kami. Ay gagano kasi yon don. Babasahin siya ni PRC ay ni ni nung time namin si Doctora something yung pangalan nun eh. Ni nagbasa nun. So binaboy ng mga kasama kung mga walang hiya yun. Sabi, ganto ang ganto ang first line kasi niyan eh. I, 
sasabihin ni ano. Ganto ako kunwari si ano, si uh, board uh, board chairman. I sasabihin niyo I. State your name, ang mga klasiko ganto ang sinabi. State your name, mga hayop talaga yung mga klasiko, mga walang hiya talaga yon. Pero wag niyo siyang gagayahin, wag niyo babuyin. Ha? Pero mga ang mga walang hiya na yon, mga klasiko na yon, nasa medicine ay mga doktor na sila ngayon. So I don't know kung kung sino pa yung hindi nang baboy, sila pa yung mga medtech na ngayon, yung actual practicing medtechs. All right? So please lang, wag niyo silang babuyin. <laughs> Or if ever bababuyin nyo siya, mag-medicine kayo. Katulad ng mga kasama ko. Mga walang hiya yun eh. Alright? So now let's move on to the issuance of COR. Who are the important signatories? Sir, kailangan kong tandaan. Yes, it's under the RA, 20, RA 5527. Especially, specifically the Section 21. Who are the signatories? Uh, the important signatories for your COR? It is signed by four persons. By four people, sorry. Four people dapat yan. Persons tuloy yung nilagay Um, the Board of Medical Technology uh, members, okay? So, sino yon? Si Chairman, tsaka yung dalawang RMT na members, okay? At that time of pass, at the time of you passing. And of course, the PRC chairs, Chairperson, alright? So, si Attorney Ed, si, si Attorney Ed na ang magsasign ng ano natin, alright? Nang, si, ang magsasign ng PRC license na natin. So, upon receiving his or her COR, what should be done to his or her certificate if one should practice the profession? Alright? If you're going to practice the profession, what is going to be done? What you, according to the law, what do you need to do? Ano? Sino nakakaalam ng sagot? Mera. Upon receiving your COR or your certificate of, reaction, of, of uh, registration, reaction tuloy, What should be done to this certificate should, if one should practice the profession? Ayoko kay Adrian. Madaming sinasab- madami nang sinagot si Adrian. Gusto ko naman iba. No offense to Adrian. You have been doing such a lovely job being our moderator for the YouTube channel. Sino? Sino makakasagot? Jenny Zabat. I saw your, I, I just see your name here. What do you do when you receive your... Okay, si Mera nag-unmute. Sige, Mera, Go. Ha? Huh? Hoy, tapos ka na magbayad. Pumasa ka na nga, na-receive mo na, nag-o-taking ka na nga. Anong gagawin mo na kung magpa-practice ka na? It bodes well for all professions here in the Philippines who will take the PRC, uh, the PRC administered board exams. Anong gagawin mo? Ayun! Very good! Wonderful! I love it! Ipagyayabang mo sa mundo na isa ka ng RMT. You are capable of doing what? You are capable of doing what is the scope of our practice? Pagyayabang mo sa parents mo kapag ka nakapasa ka na ng board exam. Mom and dad, English pa ha. Mom and dad, I just graduated from I just graduated and passed the medical technology board exams and I can do the following things. I can examine blood and urine and other body fluids including tissues. I can do blood banking techniques. I can do histopathology and cytopathologic techniques and I can do microbiology and parasitology techniques to examine the patient's disease. Alright? So, pwede mong ipagyabang yon, kasi you are now a registered medical technologist. Kaklaim ba natin to? Papasa ba tayo? Magtitake tayo ng board exam next year, 2023, March or September? Claim ba natin? Ayaw? Pag walang, nag, pag walang nag-raise ng hand, wal- He, pag hindi ka nag-raise ng hand, hindi ka papasa. Raise your hand if you want to take the exam next year. Ayan. O, kita mo, kailangan pala ganun. Kailangan pala tinatakot ng ganun. Si Mayra, hindi pa nag-raise ng hand. Parang ayaw ata niya. Ayan, nag- nag-raise na siya ng hand. Alright. Wonderful. Okay, okay. Wonderful. Lahat pala tayo gustong pumasa eh. And what do we need to do to pass the exam? Adrian, ngayon kita tatanungin. What do you need to do to pass the exams? All right. For the exam ta- for the specific subject lang ba or for the specific subject lang ba or what? Very good. Ano yung mga subjects na yon under the uh, under section ano nga yun? Section 12 pala. Section under section 12. 
Ano yung mga subjects na yon na kailangan nating aralin? Aha. Naku, nakalimutan na yung mga subject niya sa sampalin kita, Adria. Ulit, 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 ulit. Alright. Mm-hmm. 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 Last one. And kulang. Ayoko ng kulang. Ethics. Ay, nako. Ikaw talaga. Kakasabi ko lang kanina. Ilan ang mga percentage? Um, Francis, ilan ang mga percentage? Ulitin mo ulit. Ilan ang mga percentage? Francis, nasa ba si Francis? Parang hindi nagsasalita si Francis. Francis, where are you? Where art thou? Alright, how many is the percentages? Oh. Percent. Alright, the other ones, 20%. Alright, thank you so much for answering that question. Alright, you may, you may continue whatever you're doing right now. Alright. <laughs> Ah, you're listening. All right. You may continue listening. All right. Claim na natin. Ha, napapasa tayo, ha? All right. Display it to his or her workplace. All right. Now, what is the age requirement for a person to be issued a PRC license? Very good. Thank you so much. All right. All right. All right. May nag-message. Ano yung nag-message? Review po. Oh, Siyempre talaga, Charis. Kailangan natin mag-review. Kailangan na kailangan natin gawin yan, Charis. No? Charis. <laughs> Alright, Charis. Nasa si Charis. I want to hear your voice because this is the first time I've seen your name. Are you one in? Uh, are you one of the students in my previous class? Charis, are you there? I want to hear your voice. No, I don't want chatting. I want to hear your voice. <laughs> Ayan. Ay, si mother nandun sa ano, pinapagalitan ata. Magsalita ka, anak. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Okay, now let's continue. Si mother, hoy, anak, magsalita ka. <laughs> Parang yun yung narinig ko eh. All right, so um, 21 years old, you should be a graduate of medical technology. Um, I think this is a... MLTs can be issued as EOR without examination. Uh, at what con Under what conditions according to section 22? of 5527. These are the things. You have to be a graduate of medical technology uh, with practice for three years, okay, prior to the promulgation of the RA5527. You can also be a graduate of other professions with practice, with the practice of medical technology for eight years, practice prior to Six uh, prior to the promulgation of RA five five two seven. So there there are still conditions in which you can practice. You, you will be issued a COR without taking the examinations under the CO under RA RA five five two seven section twenty two. All right, okay. So these are the same things. All right. Um, for a medtech graduate practice. Uh, all right. So for MLT, what is an MLT? A medical laboratory technician. You could have, you could, uh, you could get your COR if you pass the civil service exam for uh, MLT given in 1964. There was an MLT, there was an MLT board exam uh, held in 1964, but that is already finished. Um, two years college graduate, two years college, two years of taking college course. If you, even if you didn't finish, but you had a one, you want, you had one year of service prior to the promulgation of this one. And these are things that are no longer no longer relevant right now because it's been so long. All right. So how many for every three years in college that there's certain stuff this good. All right. So ten years regardless of education. Okay. With a general average, or you could get a uh, an MLT an MLT license if you got the general average of this one. This is actually one of the things that I will ask you in your exam. All right. So please remember this one. Which of the following conditions will make uh, will give you will give you the eligibility to be a medical laboratory technician. The general average is this one. This is going. This was asked in my board exam, and I will probably put it in in a case study uh, sometime in your exam. All right, somewhere in your exam. I won't say how I will ask it, of course. All right. How many MLTs 
can be supervised by an RMT in a clinical laboratory according to the law. One, ML, one RMT can supervise two MLTs. Obviously, it is a 1 is to 2 ratio. All right? So, again, another case study in the, in the lab in, in MLT. Okay? All right? So, may tumawa. All right? Nasabi, na, nagtawa siya sa chat. All right? So, um, uh, 1 is to 2 ratio. So, I could present it like the, uh, I could present it like a case. Um, for example, there's 5 M RMTs. There's 5 RMTs and there's blank amount of uh, uh, that can be that can be staffed in this particular hospital or in this particular clinical laboratory i could do it like that i could play around with it you mean i mean the law is malleable i, I mean the law is is absolute but your knowledge of the law is something that i will be ta I, is, uh, is something that i would be testing all right okay so kailangan talaga ready kayo magabugas siya ha Malay nyo may ma-inspire tayo dito. Malay mo may ma-inspire tayo dito ni Sir Marco na maging abogado. Kasi meron akong kaklase da dahil sa medtech laws, nag-abogado, nag-ano siya, nag-take siya ng law. Alright? Mm -mm. mm -mm. mm -mm. Yung co-intern ko na UST, Sir Marco, nag-take siya ng ano, nag-ano nag lang siya, nag-abugas siya siya. Alright? And now he is a. Mm -mm. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. But he did so well in medical, ano, in in medical jurisprudence. He did so well. He's actually practicing medical jurisprudence now, a practicing attorney with a specialty in medical medical ju jurisprudence. All right. So we're cool beans here. All right. So we're going to move on with the next one. Who are the people who will be refused to be issued a COR? You will be refused if you are convicted of a crime. Alright? So, pag criminal ka, walang equal rights for ano tayo, hindi ka mabibigyan ng, ng license at saka ng COR. If you have an unsound mind, you are diagnosed with a psychological, psychiatric disorder. You have an incurable communicable disease. So, wala tayong ano sa kanya. Wala tayong equal rights for this thing. And that's the reason why we need a Modernization Act. Malay mo, Senator Cummings will be the one to modernize our profession. Alright? Malay nyo lang. Malay nyo lang, ha? Ginaganyan-ganyan lang natin yan si Adrian, Sir Marco. Mamaya niyan magugulat ka na lang sa isang interview. Tatanungin siya ni Karen Davila, yung robotic voice na ni Karen Davila. Senator Cummings, what are your... Um, um, Congressman Cummings, kasi nag-Congress naman muna siya. Congressman Cummings, what would be your platform for today? Well, I would like... Gaganon pa yung boses niya. Well, I would like... Kakanta muna siya, syempre, kasi yun yung mga ano niya, yung ginagawa niya lagi. <laughs> Kakanta muna siya. Alright? So, pagkata siya kumanta, alam mo na, sabi niya, well, one of my platforms would be to modernize my, my, my profession, which is so close to my heart. Di ba? Ganun dapat yung mga ganun. The medical technology laws. I would like them to raise the, pro the professions under, I would like to raise understanding and also to modernize our blah blah blah. Mga ganun kayo, may gusto ko ha. Pag mga debate, gusto ko yun ang platform mo, Senator Cummings. At trust me, I will vote for you. I will register and vote for you. Alright? <laughs> gusto ko mga ganun na mga platform ha. Ayoko na mga keme, keme na mga ano ha. Not gonna say anything. Because I would like to stay politically neutral. Alright? But actually, I bash all of them. Alright? Anyway, under Section 24 of RA 5527, who are responsible for investigating professional misconduct? I've told you once this, I've told this once to you guys before. This is done by at least two members of the board and a legal officer. How many are there? It's supposed to be always three. If there's an incident requiring the investigation of any person, to be uh, to be <clears throat> to be investigated it's it's going to be the board members and one legal officer usually it is provided by the state or by the country all right so baka diyan lalabas yung mga pao ano natin mga pao members natin all right next what is the difference between revocation and suspension ah this one is also i know we have a we have a we have a world we have a famous plastic surgeon in the philippines who got a suspension now, what is the difference between revocation and suspension? Anybody here in our chat room? 
or in our class. We have how many members? We have 31 people attending the class right now. And I want to see what, if anybody knows the difference. Um, I will call somebody at random. Um, revocation is unanimous vote. Oh, good. Girl, somebody, somebody is studying the law, the medical technology law. All right. What about for suspension? And what do you mean by, all right, I will ask you. Deandra Postigo. Deandra Postigo, I want you to unmute yourself. Now, even if there is a dog na tahol ng tahol sa background, I want, you, I want to hear your voice. Because I want this lecture to be at least, uh, at least be, um, uh, what would they call this? At least be interactive. Deandra, I want to hear your voice. Where are you? All right. Now, Deandra, what do you mean by a unanimous vote? All right. Very good. Thank you so much. That is actually a good answer. Thank you so much. And it was so nice meeting you. I've never heard your voice last time. I don't know if you were a attendee of my lectures from last time, but it was so lovely to hear your voice. Thank you so much. In fairness, wala na yung mga lit na mga aso na tumatahol-tahol sa background. I love it. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Postigo. You may sit down and continue listening on. No further questions. All right, so what is the difference between suspension and revocation? Revocation is a permanent. Um, aside from having a unanimous vote, it is a permanent removal of your license. You will be permanently removed. Uh, your license will be permanently removed from you. Hence, the term re it will be revoked. All right. For revo for suspension, for suspension, it is just temporary. Hence our hence the hence the famous plastic surgeon in the Philippines. All right. Diba? He's still practicing yet. Be, even though there was a scandal why what is the scandal what is what is the proponents of the scandal ba? what compro what propo what is the what is the main reason why why they needed to either uh please don't say the name huh please don't say the name all right some people are raising their hand all right Fla francis what is the misconduct ba hmm Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much. That is actually a good answer. You're thinking like a lawyer and I think you will pass my uh, you will pass my class. All right? In fairness kay Francis, nag 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 nagre-ready na para mag-abuga siya. All right, so we have an attorney, a future attorney here, a future senator, and a future, I don't know, kung ano, ano bang maitatawag natin sa kanya, Sir Marco? <laughs> uh, a, a, a future archon? I don't know. <laughs> Hindi ko alam kung anong itatawag natin dun sa isang yun. All right? So anyway, thank you so much. A future archon? <laughs> Hindi ko alam kung anong itatawag natin. Basta itago na lang natin siya sa pangalang Raiden A. All right? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so that's the, uh, that's considered as misconduct. So anything related to salacious activities is actually could actually could actually be a, a subject for revocation or suspension because you are going to take an oath. Okay, so you're going to take an oath, and anything mis anything that causes anything that causes a misdeed in the society is going to is included into that oath as well. So you not only have to follow the rules and regulations in a particular laboratory, you have to be a model citizen as well. And doing acts like that wherein you videotape and you videotape and you um, you perform perform things in a videotape without the consent of the other party is considerably is consider it's considered by the law as a misdeed or a misconduct. Okay? And it is not. It is very unbecoming of somebody who is considered as a professional. Hence, the term professional regulations commission. There's a lot of money being involved there, but we still regulate a lot of people there. All right. 
Okay, so these are the these are the conditions of a revocation: unanimous vote, it is permanent. Okay, and a majority vote is basically a suspension. It shall not exceed three years. So they are considered as a trifecta or a trium triumvirate. All right, a tri triumvirate both. Hence, we always need a three, uh, a three, uh, at least three people. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about foreign reciprocity. What are the conditions? Uh, what are the conditions of a foreign of foreign reciprocity in the Philippine in the in the Philippine practice of the medical technology profession? So no medical technologist is allowed to practice medical technology here. In, no foreign medical technologist is allowed to practice me medical technology here unless reciprocity has been established. So what do you mean by reciprocity? It has to be it has to be it has to be a it has to be a uh, it has to be a equal uh, equal uh, opportunity for both countries so for example if if for example i am i am the ambassador from trinidad and tobago trinidad and tobago gaganon ako don ambassador of trinidad and tobago and i want my i want my citizens to be able to practice here in the philippines it has to be a reciprocal process all right so there has to be a file or it has to be in filing that should be submitted to the that should that should be submitted not only to the not only to the embassy but also to the pra to the professional regulations commission okay that the the citizens the the um, the med techs from trinidad and tobago would be able to practice in the philippines and vice versa all right so pwede na tayo. so for example if that was to be approved we don't need to take a specific exam in we don't need to take a specific exam in in Trinidad and Tobago we can practice there we can go there also provided of course that you have to have a working visa of course all right so ang saya saya di ba kung Trinidad and Tobago yung pinanggalingan ni Rihanna all right so as a, a subject uh, in subject country allows Filipino to practice the profession of all right so yon okay so medyo unfair if you look at our previous con if you look at our previous conditions but what can we do all right what can we do that it's it's kind of unfair if i meant if if i'm not going if i'm going to be quite honest with you because there are some countries who abuse who sort of abuse their uh power over us but again our profession has not yet been modernized yet all right. So maybe if Senator Cummings will be elected in the year 2035, okay, um, we will see changes in our profession. All right. Okay. So we are almost finished. How many more do we need? Do we have? Um, this is the ne the next one is RA uh, RA five five two seven six section twenty eight. The roster of medical technologists in the Philippines. Who prepares the roster? Well, of course, it is prepared by the board, uh, specif specifically the secretary of the board. So among those three, there, it will, there will be one person there who will be assigned as the secretary of the board of examinees, at uh, the board of medical technology. Okay, so there's a lot of, so there's a lot of things that the board of medical technology do. Okay, they, they just they don't just administer the exams. There's a lot of things that they do. Now, what personal details are, con are contained in the roster of medical technologists? This is an important question. This might be asked in your exam. All right, what are the, what are the personal details? The name of the RMT, the date of registration, the, R the current address of that RMT, the important, other important information, and other important information, such as the, uh, whether uh, the, person, the, patient is, the person is married or anything else like that. The blood type is also included, if I'm not mistaken. I think they asked us the blood type, okay, in the roster. All right. Now, I know other important information currently working as blah, 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 because there was a, there was a, there was a, there was a, uh, there was a uh, what do you call this? A form that I had to fill out before I took the exam, before I, before I renewed my license, and one of the questions that they ask is, "Are you currently practicing in the Philippines? Yes or no?" Is that some important information? But usually in exams, they will ask these three. Okay. It is open to the public. 
Um, it is ac actually accessible in the PRC website. All you need to do is just to type it in. All right. So for example, for example, you went to the clinic. So it's just not. It's not just going to apply to medical technology. If you went to the clinic, to a clinic, you saw a couple of people there. They seem like they're not medical technologists. The way they talk and the way they approach you, they seem like they're not medical technologists. One thing that you can do is you can go into the board, take a picture of their, take a picture of their certificate, and just check. Maybe they're not medical technologists. Because as a professional, I would know if a person is a medical technologist. Actually, um, usually these are people who would be who would be if if it's Filipino, of course. And I'm not I'm not saying this as a prejudice to the other nations. But if you are a Filipino, if you are a trained medical technologist in the Philippines, you would have to build rapport to your patient. You would have to you would have to be able to at least be careful enough to do the procedure. Like for example, serology procedures or um, releasing results verbally is a big no no here in the Philippines. So I'm. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to help you guys out. So if you think these are th these are things that make it look like a person is suspicious, go and take a picture. It's allowed, or take the number and then check it in the board. Check it in the PRC website if the per person is person is actually a registered medical technologist. Because who knows? Who knows? A person might be impersonating the a, a person might be impersonating a uh, medical technologist or just borrowed a license that has been expired. All right. So again, this might be a question in the exams that I'm going to prepare for you. All right. Now, penal provisions. Penal ha hindi penal. Wag bastos. All right. Get your minds out of the gutter. Adrian, get your mind out of the gutter. Um, Rainiel, get your mind out of the gutter. It's not penal. It's penal. Penal provisions. How can a person be penalized? Well, you have to perform. You have to violate certain things under the RA five five two seven. Uh, under the uh, Philip or also known as the Fi the Medi Philippine Medical Technology Act of 1969. What are these violations? Well, basically there are six that you can violate. If you are a practicing medical technologist without a COR, a certificate of registration. If you are a medical technologist who practice without the supervision of a pathologist. If you are a practicing medical technologist using another personating or impersonation of a person of a person who has a COR, if you practice medical technology with a with a, with a suspended or a revoke COR, is another one. If you are a person who ha who reports fraudulent result lab results, all right, fraudulent lab lab results. What do I mean by fraudulent lab 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 results? Falsification of documents. What are these things? Yeah, for example, I took blood from Adrian, from Senator Adrian Cummings. And Senator Cummings um, is known to be a diabetic person. All right? Um, he is he's known to be a diabetic person because uh, we know that it's already 2035 and Adrian might have eaten so much so much sugar by then that he is he had been he has been he has been he's he just been diagnosed with with type 2 diabetes mellitus all right fraudulent lab results a uh, fraudulent lab result is as follows or a case of a fraudulent lab result is as follows Adrian is Adrian knows that he, Adrian is a medical technologist and he knows that he is diagnosed with type 2 diabetes but the result that he got is a per is from a person with with normal results so he came back again tested he got tested again for HbA1c okay is that he got tested again for HbA1c it's normal again. And then the result, he he's expecting uh, the urine result. There's no there's no there's no there's no blood there's no glucosuria. Hmm. He found it suspicious, so he went back to his house. All right, went back to his house and used a POCT monitoring device. A POCT monitoring device is what you call the hemoglucometer. Glu all right. So you use a, he used a glucometer and his blood sugar is at around 250 milligrams per deciliter, which is f way far away from the, for the re from the results of, of Senator Cummings from a fraudulent laboratory. So that could, be, that could mean that, he, that his results was either falsified or guessed. All right? It was either it was fabricated. The results were fabricated. Now that could be considered as a fraudulent lab result. Now another case. Let's go to um, to to our dear Archon friend Raiden. Now Raiden, we'll, we'll call him under the uh, under the pseudonym Raiden. 
Alright? Now, Raiden is a person who is infertile. He is infertile. But he just wanted to check if he... If the... If the... He just wanted to take a chance. Uh, maybe in a different hospital, I would get something like this. Alright? Kasi nagtanong ka, Adrian, why me? So, magagawa ulit ako ng bagong, ano, bagong case presentation. Alright? So, for example, Raiden went to the... Ano, um... Raiden went to Raiden went to get his semen examined. Now he is diagnosed with a spermia. Therefore, there is supposed to be. Therefore, there is supposed to be zero percent chance of getting any sperm yield there. All right. So he didn't get his test. He he got his blood. Uh, he got his his initial tested in laboratory A. And laboratory B gave him results that, wow, twenty million, twenty million sperm uh, per per ml. Wow. Oh my goodness. So he was happy. Now he was happy. Oh my gosh, he was happy. Now he wanted to, Now after 9 months, after 9 months he didn't get his he, he, he was he was assuming that that Raiden Raiden is assuming that her wife um under the pseudonym under the pseudonym of Ayaka now is oh my gosh, you didn't get pregnant? We have to get it we have to report that to laboratory for fraudulent lab results because what they're giving is falsified is falsified results or fabricated results. All right. So Adrian, um, Senator Adrian Cummings can go to Senator Adrian Cummings can file for a violation of RA five five two seven, a fraudulent lab report, or both of them, both both patient Raiden can go and patient Raiden can also file for a report, and this can be strong. Could be a strong uh, evidence to suggest. Could be a strong evidence. This these two people can uh, can provide strong evidence to support that these people that these people working in laboratory number two is is actually re releasing fraudulent results. Okay, so nagets nyo, nagets nyo siya, and failure to display COR of course. All right. So again, I need you guys to think like a an attorney or a lawyer all right you you i will make cross examination statements also there will be cross examination statements in your exams all right so be mindful of that one all right now under section 29 how much is the fine for someone who violates the provisions of 5527 so for example one person committed any of these violations how much will be the fine matatawa kayo guys it's only 2000 to 5000 pesos all right now, one thing that I need you to remember, one thing that I need you to remember is that the laboratory, uh, the Philippine Clinic Medical Laboratory, Medical Technology Act of 1969 is, uh, has been the same ever since. And therefore, I implore Senator Cummings to modernize it because this one, uh, 2,000, and f 2000 to, 500, uh, to 5,000 pesos is actually a minimal amount compare uh, is actually a minimal amount in today's in today's uh in today's world okay or in today's uh in today's current current um economic conditions it's nothing all right any person could pay this amount and any person could be could be convicted for six uh, for six months two years all right it's nothing it's almost nothing it's relatively nothing compared to the compared to the damage or compared to the medical misdiagnosis that could happen if there is a particular, if there is a violation of the law. All right? So maybe one of you guys um, who are listening in on our lecture for today, maybe in the future you get elected in the higher, in the higher office and maybe you will remember me and Sir Marco uh, delivering this particular lecture for you guys. All right? So that is the reason why it is important for you guys, even though you are still students and you are not yet, you are not yet practicing in the profession, you are not yet considered as practicer, uh, um, a, a registered medical technologist. This is just something that you guys could ponder over and maybe there's some changes that could happen. And maybe that's also one of the reasons why you might need somebody to help out in your profession. All right, and you might vote for somebody who can change this one for you guys. Remember, the Modernization Act of the Philippines is still 2000. It was it was filed in 2011. Imagine how long that is. I was still a student back then, guys. I was still a student back then. So imagine if if Senator Adrian uh, did become did become a did become a senator back then, and he authored a new law. 
I would probably have been have would not would no no I would probably be dead by then or would I be would probably be um be in a life support of some sorts back then or uh, uh by then bala by then wrong preposition sorry all right so we need uh, under section 29 the fine is just 2005 2000 to 5000 pesos and the imprisonment is just six months to two years we need uh, we need this to be updated of course all right now separability clause the conditions if any provisions of 5527 is declared invalid the rest will not be affected so for example um this one um section section 29 of the penal provisions has been has been amended uh, the other ones will not be affected as well all right so that's the reason why there is what we call a separability clause right this usually is the one that is oftentimes debated right which means that the law could not be absolute all right the law could not be absolute in the terms of the legislative process all right in terms of the legislative process a separability clause is demanded because the conditions might change in the future all right the economy can change and therefore the fines need to be changed as well and therefore the other provisions of the the other provisions of a particular law cannot change i uh, cannot be affected if if there is a separability clause all right now let's move on to if any provisions are uh, repealing clause a repealing clause it amends all rules and regulations and executive order except for the following laws this means that you can repeal the clause except for the following the philippine medical technology act of 1959 ra2382 it means that it's unaffected even though uh, if there are amendments or rules that are inconsistent to it except for these three these three laboratory uh, these three lab related acts the philippine medical technology act is number one it could be amended it it could be it could be amended but it cannot modify this one all right repealing all right the RA 5527 can also be amended, but it cannot affect the, it cannot, it should not be inconsistent also, which means that these three are all related, okay? These three are all related. If you modif modify something, something also, uh, something between these three things need to be modified as well, all right? All right, all right, cool, cool beans, okay? All right, so the effectivity date is... Uh, June, June 21, 1969, by P President Ferdinand Marcos, Sr. All right? Sr. All right? Cool? Okay? So before we move on to the next Clinical Laboratory Act, uh, the, uh, before we move on to the Clinical Laboratory Act of 1969, is it okay if we have a break? What time is it there in the Philippines? Can somebody tell me? All right. So I think it's time for you guys to have lunch. Correct? right um we have a debate we have a we have a special activity later all right um i think you guys have been informed earlier that you must be able before we do that i think i still have 10 minutes to discuss the rules of the debate um uh, i need to i need names for people who want to participate there will be three people in each team we will have a debate club here because we're going to discuss later bioethics all right we're going to discuss later bioethics and I need to be and I need people to be able to think think uh, critically about what they're going to answer and I need names for team leaders one one three people two team two teams it's a debate of between two teams of course each team has three members including the team leaders so there's team leader one okay it's fashioned over the Board of Medical Technology, of course. All right? It's my favorite. It's actually, th that's the reason why. I was thinking of four people, but it's too much. Uh, so I said, okay, Board of Medical Technology, um, board, board mem the board chairman and two members of his board. So who wants to be our, who wants to be the team leader for Team 1? Anybody? Ay, wala, walang sumagot. Sir Marco, kailangan ata ng incentive. Walang sumagot. Kailangan yata ng... Ha? Baka kailang... Hmm. Bakit? Um, kulang incentive ata pati. 
Ano bang incentive na maibibigay mo? Ay? <laughs> Wala ka incentive. Wala nang plus plus. Even for medtech loss. Naku, malay tayo dyan. Walang gusto mag- ano? Walang gusto mag-participate. Sayang. Malay nyo, biglang tamaan ng kulog yan si sir. <laughs> Who wants to be team leader? Ayan, 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 ayan. Sige, atay ko nga din eh. Ayan, ayan. <laughs> Jolly Vito eh. <laughs> Not yet time. When when is the time that you're going to be ready? What about, you know, what about Senator Cummings? Can Senator Cummings be the, the, <laughs> the, can you be the team leader for Team 1? All right. Who would you nominate? Who would, who would you want to be, who would you want to, you would be the speaker, of course. Um, who would you want to be your team members? Hindi pwede, kasi gusto ko siya yung, gusto ko siya yung debate mo eh. Hindi pwede si Alipio. <laughs> talaga, talaga kinuha niya yung mga, 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 mga ano ka. Alright, so Mayra at saka si Baltar. Alright, sinulat ko na ha. Adrian, Baltar. Your board members is Baltar and who's the other one? Gagazo? Alright. So your job um, later, we'll discuss later what we're going to do, okay? Because after Clinical Laboratory Act and the Blood Bank Act, we're going to discuss the we're going to discuss the bioethics, okay? So what about Alipio's team? You you can select members for your team, Alipio. Huh? Wait, walang drafting. Walang drafting. Actually, this is a this is a type of debate where you do not get to choose which side you are from. It is random. Actually, have uh, actually have four topics here. All you need to do is you're either for or against a specific topic. All right. So, what is your? Yeah, ang guling eh, no? Lakas makaano? May draft pa na na. Ah, sinong sinong gusto mong ka partner? Ay, sino gusto mong mga board members mo? At tinawag kasi si Baltar at si Gagazo. So, sinong... Kaklase mo, siyempre. Baka, baka mamaya tawagin mo kami ni Sir Marco, ha? <laughs> baka mamaya, sasamahan kita pag walang sumama sa'yo. Ewan ko ka, Sir Marco. La Serona, all right. Can I hear Can I hear her voice? Si, sino si Matulak? Hoy, tulog pa 'yon. Ah, Cesar Makatulad. So si Alipio. Kaya nga eh, nagulat ako. Nagulat ako, sabi niya Matulak. <laughs> si La Serona, wala ako, binanggit na ako. Okay. So si La Serona, And sino isa? Si Cesar Matul Makatulak? Makatulad. Now, I want to hear their voices first because I've already heard Mayra and uh, Baltar uh, and Adrian, of course, but I haven't heard enough from... Um, uh, yeah, I already heard, uh, I've already heard Charisse. I haven't heard Cesar's voice yet. Cesar, are you there? All right, so he's, he's, he, he, is, uh, he is listening in. All right, good. I want people to be active. Now, the pe the remaining people who haven't been selected, you guys also have a you also got you guys also have a particular role because this is a democratic debate, of course, as well. Fifty percent of their fifty percent of the points will actually come from you, and actually, I, I know sixty percent of the po points for each team will come from you. Two. 20% from me and 20% from Sir Marco. You are all, you're also involved here, Sir Marco. Wag kang tataka sa akin. Alright, so that would be a total of that would be a total of that would be a total of two points from each of us. Alright? Six points from the class. Whoever whoever the majority thinks they like uh, their whoever the majority thinks that the arguments are better. Uh, for example, I gave a Uh, I gave an uh, I gave a topic for example Bobati is the most superior. Uh, team Alipio said no, I'm against that one. Team Aid, Team Cummings said 
team coming said, I am against that one. Ho now, whoever, are, whoever has the majority vote from the class, they would get immediately six points, and the remaining would come from bo both Sir Marco and I. So two points for me and two points for Sir Marco. He would be, he, we, we would be deciding the theme. So it's, a, it's, going, it's going to be, again, a trifecta vote. So that we would avoid, we would avoid uh, ties, all right? We would avoid a tie, okay? So ganon yung ano natin, yung rules natin. Each each team has one has two minutes to prepare their arguments and counter arguments if they can think of something else, all right? You guys can create a room for yourself, uh, a chat room in for yourself to discuss your points later later today, okay? But this is just for me to in, inform you of the rules. Uh, of the uh, no. this will this will be just uh, just for me to uh, maybe nasa ako sino pa sabi ni Aljoy Aquino sorry sir nasa work po ako pero nakikinig po ako uh, okay but your vote still counts all right your vote still counts Aljoy okay um you can listen in and then you can listen to their arguments and think which one do you think is better which one which argument is better team 1 or team 2 okay so we will be i will be counting it later on today who how many votes would go to team one. If I ask uh, at the end of each debate, at the end of each round of a debate, there will be four rounds, by the way. At the end of each round, we will be asking you guys whether you want team Alipio or team Cummings, okay? And I will be counting the, uh, the quest. I will be counting the votes. I will be, I will be, I will be, I will, be, I, will, I, will, I will be the host also as the arbiter, okay? There should be always an arbiter in the, in the, in a debate, all right? So ready na kayo guys? Excited ba? Excited ba kayo sa debate? Have you have you participated in a debate in the debate before? Huh? So mami mo nakipag-debate ka. Taray talaga. So be, so so yun ang experience as far as I as as far as you know, that is the only experience that you have. Okay, sure. Maybe you will be able to provide good arguments. Sometimes pa parents are um, not good at that one. All right. Sa ex ko po, sir. Okay. So, all right. So, this would be probably the first time you guys will be exposed to an official or a, what you call, a formal debate. Now, hindi siya katulad sa ano natin, ha? Sa Philippine government natin, ha? Yung may nung nagtatablahan. You will be given a minute. You That will be the minute you will be talking. Oh, it could, You would be talking. And points could be deducted from you if you interrupted a person, if, if you're not being asked to interpolate. Okay? Interpolation means you... Yes, sir. Yes, it's okay. It's okay, sir. Um, uh, usually, I'm the one... I'm the only one who is open cam here but i think for the for the reason of the debate you're going to be you need to you're required to to appear on camera all team members need to appear on camera all right so i think that would be enough for us and then I'll come back. We'll come back for uh, after an hour. We're going to discuss clinical lab, the clinical laboratory act of 1966, as the uh, also the HIV act, the newborn screening act, and the blood banking act of of the Fil of the Philippines. So I'm going to give you guys a, uh, an hour. Is that okay, Sir Marco? All right. Thank you so much. I'll be leaving the classroom for now. All right. I'll go in on the on the link uh, later on. All right. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you guys again. All right.